Cassandra Martinez. And Alicia Hamilton. Sir. 
and Jesse Thurber. Help me to acknowledge Connor's senior cheerleaders, coached by Carol Finus and Andrea Walker. Your senior cheerleaders, Jennifer Nequera. football is greatly appreciated. Now introducing Connor's football class of 2018 under the tutelage of Coach of Natchez Hospital. Your managers, Alyssa Offord.
uh, presenting your Chief Class of 2018, Anthony Adam. Anthony is joined by his mom and dad. Spencer Navarro. Spencer is joined by his mom and dad. Chris Lamarco. Escorted by mom, dad, and sister. Afternoon and welcome to McKee Stadium here at Conard High School and the 61st renewal of the Battle of West Hartford as the Hall Warriors take on the Conard Chieftains. Pete Lamoureux along with Chris Grace and our fine Ryan Channel 5 Ryan crew. Ryan. High School Sports on Channel 5 is always presented by the War Chief Sports Ryan. Council. Conard with a win today could end the year over the 500 mark. They come in at 5-4 and four, while Hall can salvage their season with the victory. They check in at one and eight by Chris Grace. It's the old cliche, toss the records out when these two teams get together. Yeah, you said it, Pete. It's, first of all, it's great to be back with you to kick off our uh, annual tradition at the start of Thanksgiving week here at 
McKee Stadium for another classic matchup between Hall and Connard. And, you know, we've said it, Hall has, has had a down season and Connard has had a, a solid season. But like we've seen every year when we, we cover these games, you never know what's going to happen in between the lines. And, and that's why you come out and play the games. It sounds cliche, but it's that way for a reason because these rivalry games mean that much more to these teams. And uh, I think today we'll see everything that Hall has to offer. And I think... I think Connor will bring their A game as well, and we should have a great afternoon of football. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun here this afternoon. You talked about Hall with their 1-8 and eight record, but they can certainly salvage their season with a victory here today. High-powered offense, as always, for the Connor Chieftains, a little different in that they feature a passing attack led by Jack Moore, a quarterback, over 200 completions, 26 touchdowns on the season, and has three terrific wide receivers, 500 yards plus in each regard. But it all starts with Moore with that offense. He's good. Yeah, it's really interesting, uh, Pete, how Matt Sosmo has really transformed the identity of this offense. And a lot of that has to do with the skill set of Jack Moore and where their weapons are. But they'll spread out four and five guys on every play. They, they will run the ball occasionally, but Moore is really their most dynamic running, uh, running threat uh, out of the backfield. And they have very reliable receivers, including Stabnik. Uh, Max Main is a dual threat coming out of the backfield. Orlovsky is a very reliable option. And the young Silas Bridges is also very talented. So they'll, they'll really, uh, really exploit you through the air. It's going to be important for Hall's secondary to uh, be very solid in their matchups and make sure that they play assignment football because Moore has shown the ability to beat you not both with his legs but also through the air and be a very accurate intermediate passer as he has all season long and basically rewriting the record books for the Connor passing attack. Yeah, no doubt about it. And you talked about also rewriting the record books was Aiden Stabnick, 70 catches, breaking the record of whom? His brother, two years ago, had the record at 65 and he can also surpass the yards in one season record with 14 here this afternoon. Let's talk about Hall a little bit. Again, Frank Robinson, his 19th year as the head coach. He's been an excellent coach. He's had excellent players over the year. This year, certainly an aberration for the Warriors. They've been decimated along the offensive and defensive line with injuries. They've only started their starting offensive line one time this year. That certainly has to hurt. Yeah, you know, Pete, I mean, it's a cliche again, but in football, the lines are really going to dictate how successful you are. They, they, they dictate everything you're, allow, you're allowing yourself to do both on offense and defense. And when you lose linemen, it's really impossible to function, especially on the offensive side of the ball. You don't have any time. You don't have holes to run the football. You don't have time to throw the football. That's really what Coach Robinson's dealt with all year. It's a rebuilding year for Hall. And uh, I'll tell you this, I've, I've seen it throughout the years in many different levels. You might have a tough season, but if you win the rivalry game, you get the bragging rights for 12 more months. So a bad season can go out the window and with, with, with one, one game this afternoon. So it's a chance for Hall to really redeem themselves despite having such a disappointing season. Yeah, well, very, very well said. The War Chief Sports Council would like to thank our many fine sponsors, including those at the all-state level, and they include Keating Insurance, MACA, Plumbing and Heating, Reed and Reed PC, Counselors at Law, ESPN, College Prep Express, Cricket Press, and the McConnell Family Law Group. Thanks to one and all for your continued patronage of the War Chief Sports Council to make broadcasts like this afternoon possible. Cloudy day, game time temperature 43 degrees here at Robert J. McKee Stadium. We just had the senior day festivities as presented by longtime public address announcer Bill Watson here at Condard High School as we're just moments away from the kickoff of this afternoon's ball game. This, the final of our seven game presentation of our fall package here on Channel 5 as presented by the War Chief Sports Council. We'll be off for a couple of months and we'll rejoin you with a six game winter package starting on January the 16th. We'll have girls basketball as it'll be Hall against Conard. We'll have girls and boys basketball, girls and boys hockey, and we'll also have wrestling and boys swimming all to come in the winter sports season. We talked about the Hall Warriors a little bit. Back to the Connor Chieftains here, Chris. And uh, you look at this squad, back-to-back -back wins three weeks ago over South Windsor and Glastonbury. So certainly victories that they can hang their hats on this year. Well, there's no doubt, Pete. When you watch them play, there is plenty of talent and plenty of ability out on the field. And really, you know, what's so impressive is that this is really Moore's only year as a starting quarterback as he was uh, playing deputy, if you will, to Declan Flaherty for uh, the last couple of seasons but when you watch him you'll see he is no deputy I mean he is a leader all the way very talented they're talented up front on both sides of the ball at times 
Um, they've shown some vulnerabilities on the defensive side of the ball, but if they don't turn the ball over, this is a, is a team that on any week can really play with any team, as, as they've shown with some of the great results they've had this year. They've played some tough games with some really good teams, and uh, very easily they could be 8-1 and one coming into this game as opposed to 6-3. and three. Yeah, including the loss that they had a week ago. They were at uh, Falcon Field in Meriden and lost to Maloney, a game that they led in the fourth quarter with eight minutes to go. The Spartans came back and won that one 12-10, or else... They'd still have uh, even a lot more to play for today. They'd at least be 6-3 and three going into this one. Yeah, and, you know, like like we were talking about before, I mean, high school football now is, has become a game that is there's parity just like football at all levels. And each week, uh, you know, there's so few games each week any team could come out on top. And, you know, what we saw last year, we Connor wasn't – expected to win that game last year they had a lot of injuries a lot of guys missing and they came out and they they jumped on top of hall and they uh they hit him with a couple two-point conversion plays next thing you know we were into a into a battle and they held on to win so you never take anything for granted in these rivalry games so hall although they are shorthanded this year and they haven't had the season they were looking for i'm sure that we will see every ounce of effort and every ounce of game planning and uh every piece of trickery that they have in their arsenal to try to get some redemption this afternoon. Indeed. The 1987 Connor team being honored as part of the festivities here today, 30th anniversary of that great team, and a couple of their captains on the field for the uh, coin toss. Connor has won the toss. They'll defer until the second half, and we would assume that uh, the Hall Warriors will take the ball on offense to get things underway here this afternoon. Connard uh, winning last year by the count of 24 to 18. They lead the all-time series in this one, 34 wins to 23 losses and three ties. They're going for three consecutive wins are the Chieftains in this series against Hall. The last time that they did that back in 1998 through the year 2000 before the uh, two-game winning streak for the Chieftains in this series. Hall had won the prior three games in the matchup. Chieftains come in at 30.1 points per game. They allow 29.1. So, again, points of plenty when the counter Chieftains are involved in the game. Both teams rallying on the field. And we're just moments away from the national anthem and then the start of this afternoon's ball game. Chris, when you look at a game like this, and again, Connor, the decided favorite, how important is it for Hall to get off to a good start and uh, establish something early? It's so important, Pete, because, again, you know, with these rivalry games, it's it's all about feeling the confidence, and that comes with, with early success, whether it's a trick play or a kick return or something on special teams. Crowd is rising as we get set for the playing of our national anthem here at McKee Stadium. Woo! 
National Anthem here at McKee Stadium just moments before the opening kickoff between the Connor Chieftains and the Hall Warriors. The War Chief Sports Council would like to thank everybody who made last week's annual tailgate party a rousing success. And congrats again to the recipients of the Coach of the Year Awards from Hall. It was Jeff Billing who's done such a nice job with cross country and baseball as the head coach and as an assistant to Brian Moretti with Boys Hoops. And the winner from Connor. Ed Lidos Jr. coaches freshman girls basketball and softball. And, of course, we thank Eddie for his fine work providing us with all the great stats. He's the chief historian for all of Conard Sports. Also, congrats to former Conard swimming and lacrosse coach Will Hunter, inducted into the Connecticut High School Coaches Hall of Fame this past Thursday. Hunter, the fourth Conard coach to receive that honor. He joins George Beaudry and legendary football coaches Bob McKee and Rob Sersosimo and it bears repeating we say it every year Chris the uh, legendary coaches from uh, both sides you have grandfather father and son the three coaches all time for Conard football and of course the legendary Robinson's on the other side it's quite a tradition it's pretty remarkable Pete and just like this game is a tradition these coaches have become mainstays at uh, at the respective schools and, you know, we talked about it before. I've been so impressed following both of these schools through the years and seeing them throughout the years. But, you know, Conard has really changed their identity under the newest, the youngest of the Sir Sosimos. And that's really what football is about. You have to adjust. You have to change the times. I mean, look at how many different variations of the Patriots we've seen through the years. And uh, you have to really credit Matt Sir Sosimo for utilizing his weapons. And we'll see their offense. But first, it's going to be up to the Hall offense to uh, try to get their Big rivalry game started. And here's David Regan kicking off for Conard. And this is going to be Devin Richards at the 10-yard line, and we're underway. And he tosses it off, and here's Rivera around the near side, 20, 25, 30, across the 40, and hit hard out of bounds at about the 43-yard line. So a little trickeration right off the bat for the Hall special teams, and it works for the big return. You know, it's so funny, Pete. In these rivalry games, you expect the unexpected, and yet it still worked. They just really ran a misdirection, almost like a, a, a reverse off of, the, off of the pitch there on the return, and got some good yardage. It didn't break all the way, but... Great field position for the Warriors who have struggled all year long on offense, and now they'll have a chance with a short field to try to find some success. Just 10 touchdowns, 70 total points for the Warriors on the season. Andrew Nicholas is the quarterback. Leo Dionisio and Dev Richards are the tailbacks, so we'll go over the rest of the offense after this first play. First and 10, Hall at the 45-yard line. The two wideouts to the top of your screen. Twin setbacks to either side of the quarterback. Here's Denisio trying to run to his right, and he's wrapped up after no gain. Left side of that defensive front getting the job done as John Kirkland leading the way along with Tim Simplicio, and it'll be sucking down and long. James Gadu, Tom Crivetti, Nolan Tibble are the wideouts for Hall. Up front, they go with Gavin Baker at center, Hugh Wells and Justin Searles, the tackles. Brandon Beecher and Josh Kurzman are the guards. Second down and 10 at the 45. Play action fake. They throw it to the right side. It's complete for a short gain, a couple of yards, as on the receiving end of that time was Jack McHale, the sophomore. Short pickup. It'll be third down and long as Chris Lamarco, the left side corner, made the stop. Again, Hall just to really struggling to get anything down the field, really struggling up front to find some time for the quarterback to be successful. Third down and long for the Warriors at the 48-yard line. As Nicholas looked to the far sideline to get the instructions from the coaching staff. Takes the snap, back to pass. Throws left flat. This is Denisio, and he's hit hard. Thrown right down to the turf. Chakwara threw him down, but a flag down on the play. That's going to be a personal foul. That's a tough, uh, a tough break. It looked like a pretty nice tackle, but they're going to call him for uh, an illegal hit. You don't see that call in high school very often. You see it at the college and pro levels more, but they're going to get him for a personal foul here, I believe. Chris, do you think that was helmet on helmet? I don't, but I, I've stopped. I don't know. I mean, they ran a, a, a swing pass. He read the play. He came out. Both guys are going in different directions. It's a really tough break for the defensive back. There was nothing malicious there. He didn't lead with his head. Yeah. I wouldn't have done that, but it looked worse than it was, yeah. I, I think. But we'll, let's wait for the official, see if he's actually going to mark it off, and he is. Chakura made the, uh, the hit that time, and they'll walk it off. 
from the 45 and give them a first and 10 down at the 41 yard line. Countered defensively, Matt Walsh plays the nose. Colby Jones, KJ Chazelle are the defensive ends with Jack Parker and Cole Haggerty on the outside. Tim Simplicio, John Kirkland, your inside linebackers, Chris Lamarco. Char Curra at the, the corners, Max Main and Gabe Suarez also playing safety. So two personal fouls, and they get it down at the 26-yard line. So a big opportunity here for Hall, knocking on the door early with their first possession. Here's the handoff. Straight ahead, running room at the 10, the 5, and spun down short of the goal line. Elijah Bryan, the senior, 5'8", 199-pound back, goes right up the middle that time and darn near scored. Yeah, they uh, didn't keep their composure there, much like that second flag. It must have been for something from the bench. I don't know why they marked off 30 yards there, but they're in business here. First and 10, or first and goal right outside the goal line. Here's Nicholas, kind of hands off to Brian, and he's in the end zone, touchdown Hall. So the 9.34 mark of the opening quarter, the Hall Warriors strike first. They lead by the count of six to nothing, aided by the third down conversion with the back-to-back -back penalty calls, the big run by Brian, and then he finishes it off with the short run. Yeah, I think the, uh, the Warriors are gonna be thankful to the officiating crew there for uh, assisting them there, but when they got the big break, they took advantage of it with two nice runs in a row and the offensive line that has been so problematic for them at times this year did a great job opening up holes on back-to-back -back plays. And Connard now has to, like we talked about in the pregame, Pete, Connard has to realize that even though Hall's one and eight, uh, this game is a brand new season for the Warriors. And right now, surprise, surprise in this game, the underdog is up in front. And they lead seven nothing after the extra point was up and good. This portion of West Hartford High School Sports on Cable Channel 5 is presented by the War Chief Sports Council, brought to you by their Captain's Level supporters. And they include Hartford Distributors, Franklin Fine Beers, Cork and Bottle, the Babe Ruth Organization, Coastal Tool and Rob Ludkin, and the Connard and Hall PTO. Also by the loan supporter at the all-conference level, and that is Allied Printing. You know what I remember Allied Printing for? They did the programs for the Hartford Whalers for 20 seasons. Okay. Going way, way back. <laughs> I don't want to talk about another sponsor. I think of another sponsor when I think of the Whalers. I'm not going to say it right now, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you when we're not on the air. Dude, my first, my first Whaler reference only took two and a half minutes. Here hey, we're, do, we're doing well. we got plenty of time left. That's right. Sam Harrington teeing the ball off, getting set to kick off for home. Short kick. They call for the fair catch, and it's made at the 36-yard line. Boy, the Warriors are fortunate there. I, he called for a fair catch, and then uh, Michael Luna came up and gave him a little, a little shove. And if they were being by the book, which it seemed like they were on the prior drive, they might have thrown a flag there. I see it's only a five-man. Oh, no, it's a six-man now. I see the six-man over here. It's a six-man crew this afternoon. And so here Correction, seven-man crew. Seven, okay. Okay, full crew. First and ten for Jack Moore in the countered offense at the 37-yard line. Back to pass, has all kinds of time. Throws it deep down the left sideline, and the pass is caught inside the 30-yard line. That's Furs on the receiving end. We talked about the three 500-yard receivers. There's the fourth guy in the package, Furs. He's got it first down inside the 30. Furs, I forgot about him in the pregame, Pete. He's another talented wide receiver. And you see right there some of the uh, throwing ability for Moore. 34 yards on the completion down to the 29-yard line as the first running play goes to Max Main. Very, very little running room wrapped up by the Hall defense. Hugh Wells leading the charge for the Warriors, and it'll be second down and 10. You know, the, the only time I saw Connor this year, Pete, they were very successful through the air. Struggle on the ground a little bit. I think that uh, Moore is really their best rushing option. They want to keep them honest and, and set up the play fake, but I, I would think they'll stick to the aerial attack. Play action fake, near side, catch is made by Orlowski, and a big loss. 
Read terrifically by the Warriors. Jovan Rivera leading the defensive charge. Big loss on the play. Sets up a third down and long. We talked about it, Pete. The look at the Hall sideline. They're believing now. They've got a full crowd behind them. This is bragging rights, and they're playing inspired football right now. And I, I think at games like this, I want everything to be over the line of scrimmage. I didn't particularly love either one of those first two plays uh, once they hit the, the big pass play there. I want to go down the field north and south and not give a team that's weaker up front a chance to catch up at the line of scrimmage. Third down and 15 at the 34-yard line. Connor going backwards after that initial big completion to first. Back to pass. Here's Moore stepping up. Throws deep right side. Diving attempt and it's caught inside the five. It'll be first and goal. That's a, a great play by Moore to have discipline and realize where he was relative to the line of scrimmage. Pulled up, let his receiver break that route open, and a nice diving catch. Grant O'Connor's 44th catch. And they go towards the goal line with Maine. And he's in. Touchdown, Connor. So just like that, Max Maine and Connor responding. And they're an extra point away from tying things at the 739 mark here in the opening quarter. Well, put it in the hands of uh, Jack Moore. He gets them down close, and then Maine gets them across the goal line, and that's the type of response the Chieftains were looking for. Now let's see once Hall's taken their first body blow of the game, how they respond on their next possession. So here's the extra point on the way, and it's good by Regan. Regan, by the way, hitting his 28th consecutive PAT over the last year and a half. And we're tied at seven, almost midway through this opening quarter here at McKee Stadium. The War Chief Sports Council would like to thank our fine sponsors, including those at the varsity level. And they include Low Tide Photography, Dave Newman Photography, Cork and Bottle, Blue Plate, Fast Eddie, West Hartford Youth Basketball, West Hartford Boys Travel Basketball, Open Arm Christian Ministries, Final Cut Barbershop, Edward Connors Insurance, Stanley and Elaine Phillips, Beth Barry Brown of the William Ravis Agency, West Hartford Girls Lacrosse, and Halls Market. Thanks to one and all for your continued patronage of the War Chief Sports Council. And a reminder to join us for our winter sports package beginning on January the 16th with girls basketball between Hall and Connor. So punch, counter punch, Mr. Grace. And we're tied at seven apiece. Yeah, I mean, great start for Hall. Opportunistic. They had a chance to get off the field there on third down, and they'll rue uh, allowing more to complete that pass. But again, with these kind of games, as long as the momentum, if you stay in, in that in that fighting range, you stay within you know, a score, you can maintain the belief. So it'll be critical for them to find some more success on this next possession. Devin Richards had to feel that one over his right shoulder, and he gets as far as the 20-yard line before he's hit down and brought down by the special teams tackler, number 24, Paul Wilson, who's a backup tailback when he plays on offense. So the second possession for the Warriors, first down and 10 at the 20-yard line. That touchdown that the Warriors scored on their opening drive just the 11th time all season that they've gotten into the end zone. So that's certainly onto itself a boost for their confidence. And as we talked about earlier, Chris, the good start always helps in a rivalry game like this when you're the decided underdog. And you never know. I mean, sometimes during the course of the season, you stumble upon different athletes that you weren't expecting to contribute. And sometimes they emerge in a game like this. It might be a sophomore. It might be a player who was stuck behind someone else on the roster. So you never know. Maybe they found something uh, with those last two inside runs. And they will uh, go back to the well again with Brian. Let's see. Leo Denisio. And the offense on the field. They were lined up with three wides to the far side, including Gadu at the top of the screen. Timeout is being taken before the first play of this second possession. Yeah, one of those players in particular, Elijah Bryan, had the, the two big runs on that opening drive. He's been in the shadows of Leo Denisio for most of the season. Denisio, the uh, workhorse in that backfield for the Hall Warriors. But when you seize the opportunity early on like that, you get well, a chance to make a name for yourself. And, you know, they're, they're different styles of backs. And, and sometimes in a game like this against a bigger, probably more physical team, the bigger, more physical back might be the better option. The quicker guy 
whose quickness maybe in the practices might be quicker than his contemporaries, might not be quicker than the opposition. Sure. So you go north and south, you, and, you, and you cut off the angle, and you make it an easier situation. I know you're dying to know, Pete, and the Elis are trailing 3 to nothing at the start of the second quarter against uh, dum, dum, dum. Going for their first outright title in the Ivy League since the Carm Cosa days. Oof. And uh, as a 14-and-a-half point favorite, they're down. Thanks for the update, Chris. You're welcome. Here's the first down carry. This is Denisio trying to find some running room. Gets out of traffic. Goes to the far side. 25, 30, a foot race down the sideline at the 50. 45, 40. Cuts it back at the 35, 30. And finally ridden out of bounds near the 22-yard line. What a run that was. Unofficially 58 yards for Leo Denisio in a first down. Like I was saying, Pete, against this defense, you got to go with Denisio, the smaller, faster, more <laughs> agile back. And he pays dividends there. It was supposed to be a run up the middle, and he saw that there was nothing there, and he had the vision and the stick to to bounce it to the outside. Then he let his speed and quickness uh, take over, and Connor lost contain on the outside, and he had a, a nice big run, and Hall's back in business. Two huge runs for Hall here in the opening quarter. And flags down on the play before the first down. And the procedure call will back the Warriors up five and set up a first and 15 for them back at the 29-yard line. So unofficially, 56 yards on that scamper for Leo Denisio. This is not a Hall team that can afford to be behind the chains, though, Pete. And, and that those five-yard procedural penalties will kill them. They did hit a big run there, but it wasn't the design of the run. They're going to need to keep it you know, at short downs and distance if they're going to have successful. You saw the pass they throw all underneath. They don't throw the ball down the field. They rely on short perimeter types of plays. So for them to get behind the chains could be problematic. First and 15. And the handoff running to his right is Dev Richards. And he gets most of the penalty yardage back as he gets inside the 25, near the 24-yard line. And it will set up a second down and 10. Dev Richards, the senior running back, called by Frank Robinson, one of the great competitors on his team. And he always, always comes to play. He just does a little bit of everything for them. Returns, kicks, catches the ball out of the backfield. Runs a lot of jet sweeps, gets some conventional carries. Second down and 11 at the 25-yard line. Two wides to either side. This is Brian trying to dipsy-doodle his way out of tackles. Another nice run for Elijah Bryan. Inside the 20, inside the 15, and close to first down yardage. I appreciate Elijah sticking up for me there with that nice run after we just gave him so much credit. Again, you see there, not a lot in that, just north-south keeping it simple and showing some great lower body strength. This Hall team is playing with great intensity right now. Third down, we'll call it a long two at the 16-yard line. Again, it's Bryant straight ahead, first down and more. He's in the end zone. Touchdown, Hall! Elijah Bryant, his second touchdown of the opening quarter, and the Warriors back in front, 13-7, pending the extra point. You would think that there was some misdirection there. It's the same thing we saw. He's got now four carries and three of them. He's basically been untouched. That was just like the previous touchdown run. It's almost like no one in Hall knew that, uh, no one at Connard's defense knew that he had the football. And it looked like a conventional handoff. Untouched. Bryant, two TDs. Harrington with the extra point on the way, and it is good. Timeout on the field with 6.05 to go in the opening quarter. Hall back in front. They lead Connard by the count of 14 to 7. And Chris, big props that time. The big offensive line, Gavin Baker, Hugh Wells, Justin Searles, Brandon Beecher, Josh Kersman. They've had trouble throughout the season, but not in the first six minutes of this contest today. This is, like I said, in these, <laughs> these rivalry games, people play inspired football. And that's what uh, we're seeing right now as as this, uh, this Hall team up front in particular has really been uh, has really been uh, different than we've seen them all season long. And, and Elijah Bryant with two or three consecutive great carries there. And really, uh, Hall looks to be the team that's more ready to play right now. Although, although Connard you know, was a, a big favorite coming into this game, you wouldn't know it by those two drives from Hall as they really... Look, folks, ready. And, of course, you have to be aware on this kickoff uh, for the for the trickeration, maybe the onside kick. Steve Blanchfield, the special teams coach, always has something up his sleeve. Short end over end kick. And, again, a fair catch far side. Paul Wilson 
right around the 25 yard line. And that's where Connor will put it in play. First down and 10. Hall, by the way, if you add up Brian and Denicio, well over 100 yards on the ground attack in the opening six minutes so far, Chris. It's really staggering. You know, uh, the one thing I said before that I had seen from Connor's defense at different times this year is they'll make big plays, but they do lose their, lose their discipline from time to time defensively. We've seen that now on quite a few runs. They've lost their angles and lost their contain. Here's Stab or Orlowski to the near side, trying to run out of coverage, but the first one there to bring him down was Jovan Rivera. And at the 550 mark, it'll be second down and long. The ball came out there late, but the officials had ruled the play dead. Again, you see Connor trying to run these uh, little bubble screens, and, and I would, would stick to the passes down the field. Hall's really bringing a lot of guys up into the box, just playing with one high safety. There's going to be room to make plays down the field. Moore throws to the near side. Incomplete. He was looking for Aiden Stabnick. Going for his 71st catch of the season. It goes awry. Devin Richards on the coverage, and it'll be third down and nine. Ball spotted at the 27-yard line. Connor one for one so far today on their third down conversions. It was a big one that set up their touchdown on the opening drive. This would be a huge coup for the Hall defense to force a fourth down. Send the man in motion. That's Orlowski going from right to left. Here's Moore looking to throw. He's got his man, and it's knocked away at the 45-yard line. Looking for Furs. Big hit on the play, jarring the ball loose. Three and out go the Chieftains. Fourth down, and the punting team is on. Another legacy, Todd Craviti with the, uh, with the hit there, dislodging Furs. It was a well-thrown ball, but Craviti tied, timed it perfectly and came in. Now fourth down, we're going to see our first punt of the game. And is booted away. Hits at the 45-yard line, takes a countered roll, and goes out of bounds at the 38. And that's where Hall will put it in play. First down and 10 with their third possession of the opening quarter. Boy, this is not what we expected, Peter, but uh, I don't know why we didn't expect this. You know, a lot of those cliches you throw out before the game, I believed it in about 25% of my brain, but now that I'm seeing it in front of me, I am I am all in. Hall's not going anywhere. They have figured out a formula. They have figured out a vulnerability to this Connor defense. And more importantly, they're tackling and playing with an intensity that we haven't seen from, the, from them the majority of this season. And, uh, you know, that's why, that's why you play the football games. That's why Yale is trailing to Harvard right now. That's why Georgia Tech beats Georgia every third year. That's why you, you play the games because – it's, it, it, there's a lot more at stake than, than you normally would. And you, and there's a lot more people here than for a normal game. and That provides a lot more uh, juice, if you will. Movement along the offensive front before this first down and 10. By the way, 35 yards on that last punt for the Chieftains. And it was a first and 10. And Hall will be backed up five. It'll be first and 15 back at the 33-yard line. That's a Hall team. Not only they won an eight, they've lost seven consecutive games. They beat Enfield back on week number two in September, and uh, ever since then, they've gone 0 for two months. Well, I mean, I told you, the last time I saw this Hall team, they didn't get a first down yeah. the entire game. And, and now they've already got over 150 yards of offense, and we're still in the almost just barely halfway past the first quarter. First and 15, play action fake. Nicholas goes to his right, throws it deep down the field, has Gadu open, but it's knocked away at the 30-yard line. Good defensive coverage that time by Chris LaMarco, stride for stride with the top receiver of the Warriors. Pretty decent throw, but knocked away at the last second by LaMarco. That's the second nice play LaMarco has made this afternoon, but uh, the throw may be a, just a tad bit underthrown. So it'll be second down and 15. Back at the 33-yard line. Two wide receivers at the top of your screen. One to the near side. Single running back is Denicio. They swing it right side. Complete to Cadu at the 30, 35, and finally upended and knocked out of bounds far side in front of the hall bench at the 37-yard line with another flag down on the play. It's going to go against the offense, Pete. 
It's a holding call, Chris, so they'll be backed up. Yeah, again, uh, you got to admire Hall for taking that shot down the field, but what they did is they put themselves behind the chains again. And, uh, you know, with the success they had running the football, might want to have seen them go back to that uh, a little bit here, but now they're so far behind the chains, they're probably going to have to try to go through the air. But, you know, this might be a good time to try to pop that draw play again, see uh, see if they go back to the well again. It seems like they're struggling as to where to spot the football, and I'm not really sure. Oh, they declined, the, oh, they oh, declined it. Declined there you go. It. Interesting. Interesting, yeah. Now, now they're going to walk it off. Never know what you're going to see when it comes to the high school game. With uh, right, we'll just leave it at that. With the uh, so the ten yards marked off. Administration of things from time right. to time. Back to the 25. They have to get to the 38 to move the chain. So second down and 13. No, I'm sorry, second down and 24. They have to get out to the 48 yard line. Orders need 24 yards for the first down. You see the three wide receivers to the near side. One wide out is Gadu to the top of your screen. Long snap count. Nicholas takes a snap. Back to pass. Then he hands off on a delay. This is uh, Denisio. Crosses the 35 out to the 38-yard line. So they got the penalty yardage back. And it'll still be third down and long. What a good call right there. That was, some of the yardage it, was, back. it was almost a Statue of Liberty play, Pete. It was yeah. a beautifully designed play. He really sold it. Kind of left it down low. I'm telling you, if we went back and saw that again, I believe that was a variation of the old Statue of Liberty play. And uh, that's right. the kind of kind of draw play you might run and, and get some of the yardage back. And now you have some options here on third and ten. At the 38-yard line, keeping in mind that Hall, two for two on their third down conversions thus far this afternoon. Third Two wides to either side, as you can see. Back to pass is Nicholas. Has all kinds of time. Throws it near side. Has a man open. It's complete. And it's going to be a first down. That's Jack Tusiat on the receiving end. I'm sorry, Jack McHale on the receiving end. The sophomore making his second catch today. And it's a first down. So three for three on third down conversion, something you have to do as well. Well, you know, we talked about at the beginning of this game, we talked about the line play. And, and there you go again. He has time. When you have time, you can make throws and you can run the football. And right now, the offensive line is giving him time, taking advantage of it. At the 47 of Connor. Third time in a row that they're in Connor territory. This is Denisio running to his right. Tries to go to the far sideline, and he's going to be wrapped up and thrown down by LaMarco. Possible face mask on the play. There is a flag down on the play at the 45-yard line of the Chieftains. All the momentum with the Warriors right now, and they're going to get uh, some more help. You know, in high school, they, you can either have a 5- or a 15-yard face mask. That rule hasn't changed yet in high school. Don't get me started on that either. But uh, <laughs> it is the personal foul variety. There are plenty of little nuances to the high school game that don't exist at any other level when it comes to the rules. But right there, that's going to be a new uh, first down, and they're going to march 15 yards off all the way down to the 28-yard line. The Warriors showing great stick to on this drive after facing a second and 25. Now they are uh, back inside the 30-yard line. First down and 10. Third penalty, 45 penalty yards against Connard here in the opening quarter. First and 10 at the 28-yard line. Two wides to either side. Brian is the lone setback. Brian takes the handoff, goes straight ahead, and he's wrapped up this time and brought down by the interior, that defensive front of the Chieftains, and it'll be second down and long. See if they go back. Uh, I would, you know, Connor seems to have made the adjustment inside now to try to stop the run, and that's opened up some outside passing opportunities. I, I would love to see them keep taking shots down the field. It looks like Connor is really... Selling out to take away all the underneath routes and uh, maybe a, maybe a little choice route, an inside, and then a, a corner route on the outside with with McHale here on the bottom of the screen. Second down and nine. They fake the handoff, throw it right side, complete 25-20. Diving down to the 17-yard line is Nolan Tibble, the six-foot, 174-pound junior wideout, makes the catch and moves the chains. It'll be a first down for Hall. All firing on all cylinders right now, and we're still in the first quarter. 
They're approaching uh, the end zone for the third time today. What a wild start to this one. They're in the cricket press red zone at the 16-yard line of the Chieftains. Twin setbacks to either side of the quarterback, Nicholas. Hand off to Denisio. Tries to power his way down near the 12-yard line. He stood up and brought down John Parker leading the charge for the Chieftains. And it'll be second down and six. They'll give him four on that first down carry. Very long first quarter here with not a lot of incomplete passes. And, uh, and both teams moving the football here. Interesting that there have been this many possessions in the first quarter so far. We still have just over a minute left. Hall trying to take a two-score lead into the second. Play action fake. Nicholas throws near side. Almost intercepted. And then dropped by Chakura at the goal line. Had his hands on it and couldn't corral it. And it'll be third down and long. Big break for the Warriors. That did not stall their drive. Yeah, that was a great opportunity for Chikora to uh, redeem himself for that personal foul on the first drive. But uh, either way, it's a third down, and now they need to come up with a big stop for this uh, Connor defense who needs to get off the field. Hall hasn't popped it yet. Yeah, they're three for three on their third down conversions. Big reason why they've stayed on the field and trying to score for the third time this afternoon. Third down and six at the 12-yard line. Here's Nicholas, runs to the near side. He's going to keep it. He's wrapped up and brought down just inside the 10-yard line, and it'll be fourth down. That right side of the defensive front for the Chieftains not fooled. They combine to bring him down. John Kirkland always in the middle of things defensively. He and Tim Simplicio. Looks like the they're going to uh, bring out the kicking unit here and try to get three. It'll be a 27-yard field goal from here. Sam Harrington, 12 for 12 in his PATs, but he's 0 for 2 on his field goal attempts. James Gadu will hold. He puts it down. Kick has plenty of leg. It's on the way, and it's good. First field goal of the year for Sam Harrington, and the Warriors extend their lead to 10. It's 17-7 Hall with 11 and 8 10 seconds remaining here in the opening quarter. Yeah, I thought that was the right decision. You know, it's basically an extra point from there. And uh, Harrington, as you mentioned, has been successful with the PAT. So, so stretch the lead to two scores and put more pressure on the home team who's favored to win this game. It's been a picture-perfect start for Hall right now, Pete. And I don't think Coach uh, Robinson can ask for any more from his team. They're leading 17-7. They've scored on all three possessions and, and really off to a just a, as much as you could diagram it for the Warriors, this is what they would have signed up for, up by 10 points right at the end of the first quarter. And in Chris, in 11 minutes and 49 seconds, they've scored a quarter of as many points as they scored in nine games so far this year. Just incredible. It really is. As Harrington, Harrington puts the ball on the tee at the 40-yard line, getting set to boot it away. See a little bit there how... Uh, the weather conditions might impact this one as the ball is getting a little more windy here. The ball blowing off the tee for Harrington. Puts a toe into it. Again, high and short, end over end. Orlowski fields, and this time he'll return. Comes to the near side at the 30. Outside of a tackle at the 35-40. Good return by Orlowski out to the 46-yard line. Great individual effort as that will do it for the opening quarter here at McKee Stadium. It'll be first down Connard when we begin play in the second quarter. 12 minutes in the books here at Connard and your score, Hall 17, Connard 7. You're watching West Hartford High School Sports as presented by the War Chief Sports Council here on WHC-TV Channel 5 and online at whctv.org.
J. McKee Stadium here in West Hartford. Pete Lamoureux along with Chris Grace and our fine Channel 5 crew. By Brendan McCormick on site, Jen Evans back at our studios at Town Hall in West Hartford. Connors on offense for the third time in the opening half. Down by 10. Early shocker here in West Hartford in the 61st renewal. Still a lot of game left. A lot to play, no doubt about it. Pass comes to the near side. Complete. That's Furs at the 41-yard line. He's gang tackled by the Warriors, but it should be a first down for Connor. You know, that's the, the third time he's looked for Furs, and he's been open all three times. Dropped that last one on the nice defensive play by Cravini, but I would keep looking that way. I mean, when they when they uh, just straight drop back and keep it simple, throw the ball, those intermediate passes, more is as good as there is around here. We got 12 yards on that pass play. Complete again. Here's Furs out of a tackle inside the 25, down to the 23-yard line. Cravini finally brought him down, but not until another first down and again a 19. Yeah, from what I've seen from Connor this year, that's when they're at their best. Those. Uh, you know, between five and 12 yard passes, more really throws an accurate ball underneath in those shorter medium types of throws. And uh, Furs is a nice, reliable weapon for him on the outside. The first down carry, a little trickeration, the pitch to Orlowski. Tries to run to the far side, can he get the corner? And he's finally upended inside the 20, down at about the 19 yard line. They ended, they ended up picking up maybe four there, Pete, and it's it's a, it's a decent gain, but again, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I want to uh, run side to side against a smaller defensive team. Hugh Wells on the stop for the Warriors. Second down, call it six, just outside the 20-yard line. Play action fake, throwing deep left side, looking for Furs, he goes up for it. And it's incomplete. He was out of bounds. Wow. Trying to get the one foot down and could not. He was that close to a touchdown, but goes incomplete. It'll be third down. Nice pass and a nice catch. I couldn't see from here. It looked very close, and the official, to his credit, was in great position to make that call, but it could have gone either way. I wouldn't have been surprised if he threw his arms up in the air. But again, though, you see Furs having it, having an impact here uh, early for Connor. He's open. Got three 500-yard threats that uh, they have to worry about, and he's uh, the odd man out. Third down pass is short at the 10-yard line. It bounced in front of Orlowski. In on the coverage was McHale, and it'll be fourth down and long. A little no-man's land here, although Regan's got the leg, but you want to go for it. They're going to they're gonna go for this. There's no doubt about it. This is a statement play at fourth and six at the 20-yard line. And again, that's the second time we've seen Moore maybe rush a throw a little early there. He had, had a little bit more time than he thought and underthrew it. Fourth down. Here's Moore. Has all kinds of time. Scrambles to the near side. Pump fakes. He's going to keep it. Tries to turn the corner, and he's got a first down. What a run by Moore. Big play right there for the Conard offense to keep them on the field. First time we've seen Moore use his legs. That's something I'm surprised they don't do a little bit more of. Every time I see him run the football, I'm more impressed. Did a great job of pump faking when he got to the outside to hold the defensive backs, create a little bit of room, and then it was just all athleticism to finish off that run. So it's first and goal to go for the Chieftains at the eight yard line, hand off to Max Main, puts his head down, goes straight up the middle, still on his feet, and he bangs down to about the one yard line. Gain is seven, and it'll be second down from just inside the one. Nice physical run by Main, sets up a uh, goal to go situation from the one yard line, and it's exactly what Connor needed on this drive, and what a big fourth down conversion on the prior play by Moore as that could have been a, a, a clear momentum shift for the Chieftains now. And let's see if they could take advantage from inside the one yard line. And what do we have here? It's That's a huddle, Pete, is what that's called. That's a huddle. Yeah, I haven't seen that in a long time, Chris. Well, the full house backfield, quarterback under center. Moore tries to dive ahead, depends on the spot. They'll unpile, and he's in the end zone. Touchdown, Connor. So at the 9-17 mark here in the second quarter, the Chieftains draw closer pending the PAT. They're back to within three. Yeah, that was an interesting play design there. They, they really took their time and were deliberate. They huddled, brought in a full house backfield, and then uh, 
used all of that just to run the quarterback. So maybe a little misdirection, get him, set him up for something a little later in the game. But uh, huge drive for the Chieftains. Here's Regan's PAT. Has the distance, and it splits the uprights. Timeout on the field, 9-17 to play in the opening half. Hall 17, Conard 14. The War Chief Sports Council would like to thank our many fine sponsors, including those at the all-state level, and they include Keating Insurance, MACA, Plumbing and Heating, Reed and Reach PC Counselors at Law, ESPN, the Entertainment and Sports Programming Network, College Prep Express, Cricket Press, and the McConnell Family Law Group. Thanks to one and all for your continued support of the War Chief Sports Council to make broadcasts like today's possible. And our next broadcast comes your way on January the 16th. Girls Basketball Hall against Connor. Got some good news for you, Mr. Lamoro. What do you got, Chris? The Eli's have doubled the margin, now leading 14 to 3. All right. Yale Bowl rocking today. Halfway through the second quarter. In West Haven, Connecticut. <laughs> That's Home. A, it's something most people don't realize. That's yeah. a good point you make there. Where the New York Giants played a year and a half of their home games. That's right. First NFL game I ever saw, Chris. Giants and Redskins, 1973. Sonny Jurgensen. Sonny Jurgensen and Billy Kilmer were the tandem. That's only uh, Larry Larry Brown, the running back, had two touchdowns before. Oh, an onside kick. Far side of the field. That was very strange. Yeah. Well, well, what's strange, someone from Connard must have touched it before it went 10 yards because it ended up kind of rolling across the 50. Yeah. Then no one jumped on it. If, you know, Hall, if someone touched from Connard, they shouldn't. They shouldn't touch the football, but uh, based on where they're spotting the ball, that must have been what happened. Right. Interesting, interesting decision to go for an outside kick, though, after you just get some momentum back. Right, right. Think give you want a, to pin give them deep. a short field here. Yeah, the 48-yard line. Sometimes you can be too aggressive in these rivalry games. When the trick plays work, it's awesome, and when the onside kicks work, it's, it's great. But uh, you could also see the other side of it, which is giving a team – who scored on their first three possessions, another short field. Right. So fourth time today they're in Connor territory, and that was thanks to the Chieftains. First and ten at the Chieftains' 48-yard line. Hand off to Denicio coming to the near side. Flag down, 40, 35, and brought down at the 31-yard line. Colby Jones and Regan combined to make the stop, but this one's coming back. It's going to be a holding call against Hall. It's a tough break for the Warriors as... Uh, there was some room there for Dionisio, but it's going to go from a, a big gain to a big loss as they will move that one back 10 yards from the 50 all the way back to the 40-yard line. So they add the momentum on their side for a play and then shoot themselves in the foot. Actually, the 42-yard line, I stand corrected. That thought I saw a flag at midfield. That's just uh, the circle from the from the uh, soccer in, in lacrosse uh, face-off circle, right. All-purpose field here at McKee Stadium. So after the penalty, first and 20 at the 42. Pump fake, throw over the middle, almost intercepted. As Gabe Suarez had his hands on it, the pass was thrown behind the intended receiver, McHale, and it'll be second and long. Looked like that time he thought McHale was going to run some sort of a comeback route, and McHale just kept running like he was running a post or a streak. And Suarez read it perfectly, but that's another missed opportunity for the Chieftain secondary as they could easily have two, maybe three interceptions so far yet to force a turnover. Suarez had that opportunity. Chakura earlier in the first half. Had one down near the goal line. Second and 20 at the 42. Gadu in a slot. McHale to the top of your screen. Twin setbacks to either side of the quarterback, Nicholas. Fakes the handoff, throws it far side. It's a low throw. It's incomplete. It was intended for McHale far side. And again, defensively, Chris Lamarco right on top of the intended receiver. And it'll be third and long. Pete, you know me well enough to know that I've never been a fan of the uh, wide receiver screens or the bubble screens. I'm really not a fan of them when the ball floats and it sits up in the air like that. Sure. And that you got to put a lot more mustard on the throw if you're going to have success with those types of plays. They really dodged a bullet there as that easily could have been a fumble or an interception again. Third and 20 
Hall three for four on the third down conversions this afternoon. And the one time they didn't make it, they turned it into a field goal. Straight drop. All kinds of time. Throwing deep right side, incomplete. As he was trying to hit Graffiti over the middle. Flag down on the play. And a holding call is the initial indication. They're it's going to be declined. Connor wants the football back, and Hall will be forced to punt it away. Here's something else that we haven't uh, talked about yet, which is Drew Nicholas is also the punter. And like we've seen throughout the years with Coach Robinson teams, mm -hmm. the quarterback who acts as the punter will line up about five yards behind the line of scrimmage and force the defense to commit a returner. And then he'll back up the additional five yards and, and proceed to punt the football. So we'll see if they go back with that now or if uh, they're going to make me look foolish here on Channel 5. No, I think they're going to do like they, uh, they always do. And now he'll drop back. He's averaging 32.5 yards per boot this year. Low snap, but he gets it away. Nice kick, angled to the far side. Going to hit it to 20. It's going to take a haul roll and go dead just in outside the 11-yard line. Beautiful punt. Really was. 47 yards on the boots. No return. 8.04 to play until halftime. And Hall has a 17-14 lead. And Connor down the field. If they can negotiate Chris Grace, 89 yards to pay dirt, they would have their first lead of the afternoon. Yeah, and that'll be critical. We've talked all along. When a team like Hall has struggled this season, as long as they have their, you know, they have a slight lead or they're within, within distance, within touching distance, uh, you, you maintain that belief. But the second that that shifts a little bit, it can it can escape you. So it's critical for Connor to try to take advantage of this chance to take the lead as we uh, approach the end of the first half. Max Bain for about four on first down as he went straight ahead. Matt Langevin on the field, 27 carries as the backup to Maine. Main, Main uh, the workhorse at 524 yards on the season. Langevin just 27 carries for a buck 25. Second and six at the 15, throwing right side, and it's complete. Out of bounds with a first down at the 28-yard line. That's a name we haven't called too often today. That's Aiden Stabnick in his 71st catch of the season. He's a guy who's basically open on every play. You can go, he's the safety net. He, uh, most reliable threat, great hands, great size. Really a prototypical possession type of receiver, tight end kind of hybrid for, uh, for Jack Moore. And he's been there all season long. That's an impressive season tally, 70 plus catches. Moore all kinds of time on first down. Pump fakes and now throws back across the field and it's complete to Langevin. Crosses the 30 and out at the 31 yard line as he goes down. Good recovery by the Hall defense that time. Hugh Wells among those in on the stop. Great poise by Moore, though. He, he uh, had a lot of time, so the line did their job, but he didn't force anything down the field. He waited, and he checked down, picked up a nice gain, setting up a second and manageable. Yeah. Gain five. It'll be second and five out at the 31-yard line. Moore taking his time. The two wideouts to the top of the screen. Straight drop. Again, all kinds of time for the countered quarterback. Now he's forced to run and he's dragged down. There's Nolan Tibble that time, bringing him down for the big loss. And it'll be third down and long. Curse of the commentator that time, Pete. I talked about his poise in the pocket and uh, making the good decisions. And he held on to it too long. And Tibble, who is always the guy who makes the plays for this team, particularly on defense. We already saw him make one play on offense. Makes another big play there, dragging down more. He's just a junior, so he'll be coming back for another year to play for Frank Robinson. Third and 11 for the Chieftains at the 25-yard line. The three wides to the top of your screen. Moore back to pass, feeling the heat, steps up, throws deep over the middle, knocked away. Good defensive play by Thomas Graviti that time as Orlowski was behind the defense, and it'll be fourth down. Great play by Graviti because uh, it looked like Orlowski was open, but again, Secondaries for both teams have made some nice plays to uh, prevent big plays down the field as both defenses are really taking chances without safeties out there. So they're a big place to be had down the field. Yeah. If they keep uh, pushing the ball, they will be out there. 
The rush was on, but he gets the boot away. End over end, hits at the 50. And down at the 49-yard line, a flag down on the play. Did they get the punter that time, Chris? Absolutely, they got the punter. They tried to block it. Just going to be a five-yard penalty, though, which is a break. Another rule I uh, also am not a huge fan of. I don't like any gray area when it comes to officiating. And uh, the Especially punter gets knocked down. How is that not roughing the kicker? And I, We don't have a horse in this race. I don't, right. I don't want to... Uh, play favorites here but I, I i don't understand how that's either not a flag or it's a personal foul in my opinion yeah i agree with you 100 percent and just one look at uh, tim simplicio and he's uh, limping all over the place i mean he got nailed on the play you don't touch the football and you touch the punter's legs it's uh, it's a dangerous play mm. but again that's uh something i'm not going to try to get too deep into is uh, critiquing the men in the men in stripes right. Simplicio again, and off the side of his foot, hits down at the 45-yard line, a very short kick, just 16 yards on the boot, and excellent field position for Hall, will take over first and 10 in Connor territory at the 46-yard line with 527 to play in the opening half, Hall trying to add to a 17-14 lead, and for the fifth time today, they are in Connor territory. Yeah, it's really... It's been a remarkable part of this game in that Hall has had terrific starting field position, but but really they've just been opportunistic with the ground game. I'm a little surprised. They've been running the ball so successfully, and their line has been doing such a good job. I would keep pounding the football and keep trying to break those runs because when they have gotten past that first level, there have been huge amounts of room. First and 10 at the 46. Two wides to the near side. This is Gadu at the bottom of your screen. Dionisio is the running back. Leo takes the carry, puts his head down, goes straight ahead, crosses inside the 45, down to the 44-yard line. Picked up a deuce on the play. Kirkland stood him up and brought him down. It'll be second down and long. So Hall now, if they, in a perfect situation, would be able to work some clock and find some more points before halftime as Connor will start the second half with the football. That would be an ideal situation. Play a little keep away here and move the chains a couple times. Sure. Yeah, best case scenario, not only score, but take three or four minutes off the clock. Officially just a yard on first down. They fake the jet sweep, going to his left. Nicholas has room and finally dragged down inside the 35 at the 34 yard line. He has a first down for the Warriors. That was a well-designed play. That was actually a triple option, Pete. He, he had the option of giving it to the man on the sweep, and then he had the option of pitching it on the uh, on on the to the jets to the uh, jet sweep guy coming along the left side. And he read the play perfectly, picked up some nice yardage. And if it weren't for the open field tackle, he could still be going. I thought he might have taken that one all the way to the house. Gain ten, first and ten at the 35. Send the man in motion on the jet sweep. They have yardage inside the 30, down to the 26-yard line. That's Brian. I'm sorry, that's uh, Rivera. Brian was uh, out in front leading him that way. And down near the 25-yard line. Now they're going to move the chains again. And, and again, and 10. you know, just like we talked about, your offensive line gives you opportunities, and they're running the football. And Connor is getting beaten up front, which is something we definitely didn't expect to see. First and 10 at the 25-yard line. Now Nicholas looks to the far sideline. Brian is a setback to his left. Gadu at the top of the screen. And now a delay of game being assessed against Hall. So they took too much time. And the five yards will be marked off to the 30, and it'll be first and 15. I don't know. I don't love the delay game in high school. There's no play clock anywhere for the players. It's inconsistently called. Not a huge fan of no, that. That's a good point. But I don't make the rules, Peter. I wish we did sometimes, Chris. I do, too. I can. T t we can go for about an hour if you want to hear some of them later. We'll see how this game goes. Here's Brian. Straight ahead. Inside the 25. They moved the pile down near the 24-yard line. So he got the uh, penalty yardage back and then some, and it'll be second down and long. 
Well, yeah, you know, an offensive line. I just want to give uh, credit, uh, if we could, to uh, Josh Kurzman, the uh, five foot eleven, two hundred and one pound right tackle for this Hall Warrior team. Done a yeoman's uh, job so far on the offensive line, Chris. Yeah, they've really had great success running to the right. You're right. That's where the, the majority of their success has come. And Brian, with limited work, has had great success as well. Great balance from the Hall offense so far this afternoon. Yeah, and that's Cup Connor off balance. Second down and 10. Pass to the far side. It's complete. Has his man McHale inside the 20. Down to about the 17-yard line. Makes for a third down and very manageable situation for the Warriors. And really, you have two plays to pick up this first down here, you would imagine. Sure. A little too deep for Harrington. Uh, but uh, a chance to really give themselves a great advantage going into halftime. Connor with just two timeouts left, and the clock already towards two minutes now. Inside of two, third down and two at the 17-yard line. Here's Nicholas. Pitches it back. There's Brian. He's going to be thrown for a loss back at the 20-yard line. Good job by LaMarco defensively, but that play was doomed from the start. Well, that was the same play we saw Nicholas run for the big uh, first down on just a about three minutes ago, you saw the third part of the option there was the pitch, and he made the wrong read that time. Probably should have given it on the handoff to start instead of trying to stretch it out on the option. Instead, took a chance, and now it's a, a fourth and much, much longer. Out at the 20-yard line, they have to get inside the 15 to move the chains. Fourth down. 1.15 to go. wonder if they'll use a timeout here. And good call, Chris Grace. Frank Robinson asking for and receiving a timeout. Comes with 71 seconds to play here in the opening half. Hall trying to add to a 17-14 lead as they get ready for fourth and five, and they will talk about it. So the thing I've noticed most about this Hall team is they've really emptied out the playbook today. But uh, when I saw them earlier this year, they could just not protect at all, and you have to give a ton of credit to that front the offensive line doing a great job, but the offensive coaching staff is really, I mean, we're not surprised by this, but they have really outdone themselves in the first half, mixing up all the formations and uh, the play calling has been spot on. They haven't executed perfectly throughout the entire first half, but they've done a really nice job. And when they've been presented opportunities based on penalties, they've taken full advantage of them. You go all the way back to that first drive of the game, how different this game could have been on what looked to be a, a three and out Connor gets called for a debatable personal foul, and that really gave them. And then they get another one for the sideline, gives them 30 yards instead of punting. Hall's inside the 30, but they didn't hold back in their laurels. They took advantage of it and busted those two big runs. Yeah, that was a third and nine that had been stopped. So here we go, fourth down at the 20-yard line. Down. Little trickeration. Here's Rivera, and he's going to be brought down at the 22-yard line. The Connor defense rises to the occasion. That's Colby Jones, the Colby senior Jones. nose tackle, uh, was in the backfield to throw down Rivera. It'll be first down, Connor. Yeah, I thought that might have been a, a pass coming there. I thought it might have been a double reverse pass from uh, the way that play looked, but it was just a regular reverse. And uh, great job by the Connor defense staying home and making the play in the open field to get the football back with 104 left in the this prolific passing attack, two timeouts, plenty of time to work for the Chieftains as the clock will stop anytime they go out of bounds or pick up a first down. And now uh, we will see Jack Moore in his element as he'll spread him out and throw the football down the field. Three wides to the top of your screen. The lone setback is Maine. The man in motion coming to the near side is Orlovsky. Back to pass is Moore. Throws deep down the left sideline looking for Furs. Can't get it. Good defensive coverage that time. Craviti was back with him stride for stride, and it'll be second down and 10. Great coverage by Craviti. Second big play he's made. And... Uh, Really, there hasn't been much open way down the field for Connor. It's been the intermediate stuff they've been successful with. But uh, they took a shot on first down. Not a bad idea. and Just a well-defended play by Craviti. So second down and 10. Connor operating at their 22-yard line. Two wides to either side. Taking all kinds of time is the quarterback, Jack Moore. 
Fakes the handoff, steps away from a would-be tackler, throws on the run, complete, has his man across the 35-yard line. Aiden Stabnick made the catch. And the first down stops the clock after a gain of 14, first and 10 at the 36. Great read by Moore. He read the pressure coming from the outside, from the inside, sprinted out to his right, and then threw a very nice ball on the run to Mr. Reliable Stabnick. And uh, you expect that those two will connect a few more times before this afternoon is over. Again, Stabnick started the day, 70 catches, 629 yards. The receptions record for the school. He also went over the yardage record for one season, eclipsing both marks set by his older brother Cole a couple of years back here for the Connard Chieftains. Timeout was taken on the field prior to this first and 10 for Connard out at the 36 yard line. Fourth season for Matt Sersasimo as the head coach, 23 wins, 16 losses overall. Trying for his third winning season out of the four campaigns he's been at the helm. 19 years at the helm for Frank Robinson and company. Both excellent leaders. First down and 10. Moore throwing right side. And it's incomplete. Nearly intercepted by Devin Richards and Rivera back in coverage as well. That time it looked like Moore anticipated something was going to be there that wasn't. And uh, that's a dangerous, dangerous decision. Almost paid for it. Both teams have missed chances for for big interceptions here and Moore is given a reprise in a, a second down now after nearly throwing what could have almost as, been a pick six. As good as he's been, he threw two interceptions against Glastonbury. One of them was a pick six. Here's the handoff straight ahead across the 40 out to the 43 yard line. That's Max Bain. Gained about seven. Quick timeout taken by Matt Sousasmo with 38 and 610 seconds to play until halftime. I think that's their third and final timeout as well. I think they used one on defense early in the game, if I recall. So they're going to be out of timeouts, which means uh, this is a big third down play. So you might end up seeing Hall get the ball back here if they get a stop. So They could. At least, if nothing less, force a punt. We saw them almost block the previous punt and uh, force at least that second effort after the five-yard penalty, and it was a short punt. So you never know in these uh, types of games to take chances. Maybe try to set up a block with nothing to lose. Sure. On the flip side, if Connard can convert and uh, try to work their way down the field, Regan does have excellent range as a kicker. Hit a 37-yarder last week against Maloney. And uh, Matt Sousasmo said, going in this direction of the field, you wouldn't hesitate to try from 45, so that means they need to get down inside the 30-yard line. First things first, though, third and four at the 42. Here's Moore with time. Steps up, gonna run, first down and more, and he's gonna be wrapped up at the 43-yard line. Again, you see how, how dangerous of a runner he is. That'll stop the clock when they move the chains here. Looks like... Gained 15 on the play, sets up Connor to first down at the 43-yard line. So maybe that first timeout was taken by Hall and not Connor. I think that's what happened, Chris. Yeah, so that was the third and final timeout right here for Connor at the 43. Interesting that they would elect to use a timeout instead of just uh, hustling the line of scrimmage and spiking those it. last two plays, either spiking it or just running a play. Yeah. You have a lot of time before they, uh, the high school level, it, the, the action works a lot slower than it does the college level when it comes to moving the chains with those first downs. But uh, this is the... Uh, you can't argue with stopping the clock and preserving some seconds, and now uh, they can use the sidelines if they want, or they can go through the air, give themselves a chance to tie it up. At the 43 of Hall, 29 and a half seconds to play. Hall 17, Connard 14. And as you see, two wideouts to either side. Moore with the straight drop, has time, throws to the near side, has Furs inside the 30, wrapped up and brought down by Craviti at the 25. Another first down, gain of 17 on the play. Clock running. Solomon's made the uh, stop. They get to the line of scrimmage. He spikes it, stops the clock, 17 seconds to go, and it'll be a second down from inside the 26-yard line. Really well done there. First of all, they, uh, a nice pass and catch to Furs, and then they, they didn't waste any time. They got to the line of scrimmage. Only killed about two and a half seconds in spiking the football, so... There you see right there, if you hustle up, you can uh, 
really move the ball pretty pretty quickly at the high school level. Exactly. At the 25, first and 10. 17 and 6 10 seconds to go. Here's Moore. Throws near side. Again, he's got Furs with the catch out of bounds at about the 13-yard line. 12-yard advance. First down, 12 seconds to go. Here's where you, the decision comes in. How greedy do you want to be? Do you do you want to try the field goal with a kicker that you trust now and no timeouts? If you get tackled in bounds, that's pretty much going to end the, the half here. So you would expect them to uh, maybe throw a ball into the corner of the end zone here. First down, back to pass, pump faking, throwing near side, and it is incomplete. They say he caught it out of bounds. Boy, what wow, a that tough was break. Close. That was a touchdown. Wow. He missed that one big time. And we don't have the best vantage point from I up saw here. That but, but quite uh, perfectly from here, Peter, and he, he got, got both a, feet in on that sideline. And... Uh, Tough and you can, break. Hear, you can hear the boos from the Connor Faithful right, right down in front of us here. Boy, that's a tough break. Now with seven seconds left, they have to hurry. They could get a delay of game here, which could possibly take them out of field goal range. Seven seconds to go from the 12-yard line. Moore's got to get rid of it quickly. Throws near side, completes, and out of bounds. Stabnik has the reception inside the five. He's going to be marked out at about the three-yard line. And 2.6 seconds to go. What does Matt Sassimo do? Goes for the field goal. Yeah, goes for the tie here at halftime. It's the right call. You're getting the ball to start the second half. It's basically an extra point. So here's Regan. Nine out of ten on field goal attempts for the season. This will be from 21 yards away and a flag down on the play. It's going to be encroachment, which will make it even closer. Now they might think about stuffing it in with the offense. Yeah. Because that's going to move it half the distance to the goal down to about the one and a half yard line. But I'll tell you what, I, whew, it's a risky decision, but I might just bring the offense, have more go out there and try to stuff it in. The risk you take is if you get stopped, give some momentum back to Hall, you're getting the ball to start the second half. I might just uh, try to stuff it in, but that's not the option they're taking. Here's Regan. Puts a toe into it. Has the distance, and it's good, and the game is tied at halftime. So Regan's 10th field goal of the season. He's 10 for 11 on the three-point conversions. And at the intermission, it's Hall 17 and Connard 17. And what a first half, Mr. Chris Grace. We saw a little bit of everything, and I think kind of fitting that we're deadlocked going into the break. Yeah, it's really, it's been just what you expect in a rivalry game. We've seen some trick plays. We've seen some big plays. We've seen some near misses, and we've seen some uh, some great moments and everything to play for in the second half. We are right where we started, Pete, 17-17, and it should be a fantastic final uh, 24 minutes of football here. And uh, just when we have a minute here, we'll read off how we got to this point. Hall started the game with a reverse on the kickoff to give themselves decent field position at the 45 yard line but what looked to be a three and out was extended on a on two penalties on one play for connor two plays later elijah bryant rumbled in for the touchdown to make it 7-0 but connor marched right down the field max main plunged one in from two yards out extra point was good and we were tied at seven apiece with 605 left bryant then again found Pater this time from outside of the 20-yard line to make it 14-7. Harrington hit a chip shot 27-yard field goal late in the first quarter to make it 17-7. Those are the last points Hall would score in the first half. Moore from one yard out, 9-17, made it 17-14. And then Reagan, as time expired, brought us to where we are at 17 apiece at halftime. Should be a lot of fun as we look forward to second half action here at McKee Stadium. The War Chief Sports Council would like to thank our many fine sponsors to make broadcasts like these possible, including Keating Insurance, MACA Plumbing and Heating, Reed and Reed PC Counselors at Law, ESPN, College Prep Express, Cricket Press, and the McConnell Family Law Group. Thanks to one and all for your continued patronage of the War Chief Sports Council. 
Chris and I will come back with second half action, but we're going to step aside. Again, you're scoring halftime at McKee Stadium in the 61st renewal, the Battle of West Hartford. It's Hall 17, Connard 17. We're back with second half action in about 10 minutes. Thank <laughs> you. 
ladies and gentlemen, as mentioned prior to the start of today's game, 2017 marks the 30-year anniversary of Connor's second undefeated regular season in the history of the football program. Under the guidance of coaches Ross Sasimo, Pat Maloney, and Peter Pfeffer, the Chiefs won a school record 10 games, culminating with a win over the Warriors of Hall on November 21st. This was Connor's first league title in seven years, and they were rewarded with their first postseason appearance in school history when they competed against West Haven for the Class L title. With us this afternoon are members of that 1987 team to be recognized for their special accomplishments. Those members are assistant coach Pat Maloney, assistant coach Peter Pfeffer, players Bruce Burgoyne, Carl DeCoco, Peter Gustafson, Rick Kelleher, Mike Tercutis, Ted Mancini, Steve Morrison, Scott Schneeberger, Brendan Sheehan, Kevin Shirley, and Warren White. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing members of the football class of 1987. Ladies and gentlemen, the War Chief Sports Council would like to thank everybody who made last week's annual tailgate party a rousing success. And congratulations again to the recipients of the Coach of the Year Award. From Hall, Jeff Billy, who has done such a nice job with cross country and baseball as the head coach, and as an assistant to Brian Moretti with Boys Hoops. The winner from Connor was Ed Lido.
that you're watching us instead of the Lions. Christopher, both coaches had a chance to rally the troops, as it were, take us into Frank Robinson's hall dressing room. What's he saying to his squad? He's saying we played a good half, but we've got another half to go, and we uh, it's basically 0-0. Zero, zero. I'm sure that came up at some point because it's, it's all tied up, and again, you have to be very cautious if you're on the Connard sideline of some type of an onside kick to start the second half as Connor has been able to move the ball down the field on their last two drives pretty successfully. And uh, Hall has been a little bit more stagnant on offense after uh, scoring on their first three possessions. So I would expect for Hall to pull out all the stops in the second half and really leave it all out there. And I expect this to be a heck of a second half. Matzer Sasmo, on the other hand, saw his team rally from a 17-7 deficit at the end of the first quarter. They got the last 10 points of the opening half. Glass half full or half empty as he addresses his squad at the intermission? Well, I think they were unfortunate. Uh, they easily could be leading. I thought that they had made the play for the touchdown late and were the, not the beneficiaries of, of the uh, proper call in the corner of the end zone. Uh, they also um, were unlucky at times with some, some penalties. So I think they started a little sluggish, but uh, I think they finished the second half very well. I think his team is probably ready to go here in half number two. The rain starting to come down a little bit. How does that impact play here, in your opinion, in the second it's, half? You know, does it, does was, it have any effect at all? I was just out there uh, at halftime. It's not a hard enough rain, I think, that it will really have an impact. Might make the footballs a little bit slick, but they're already slick to begin with on a cold day. Um, if anything, it will probably impact Connor a little more because they tend to throw the ball more, but I don't think it's going to have much of an impact in the – the surface will be fine because it's a field turf, all-weather surface. So uh, I, I think unless it starts raining a little harder, the only thing that's impacting is the lights are now on here uh, as it's uh, gotten a little bit darker. Both teams get ready for half number two. 
Biggest half of the season for both of these guys and for these seniors. It's the last half of football they'll ever play for a lot of them, so time to leave it all out on the field. Yeah, no doubt about it as uh, we get set for the start of play here in the third quarter. The War Chief Sports Council would like to thank everybody who made last week's annual tailgate party a rousing success, and congrats again to the recipients of the Coach of the Year Awards from Hall, Jeff Billing, who's done such a nice job with cross country and baseball as the head coach and an assistant to Brian Moretti with Boys Hoops. And the winner from Connard, Ed Lidos Jr., coaches freshman girls basketball and softball. And of course, we thank Eddie for his fine work providing us with all the stats. He's the chief historian of Connard Sports. Speaking of Jeff Billing and the Hall baseball team, it's going to be an opening there. Jeff is going to step aside as the head baseball coach. He and his wife expecting their first child sometime in March. So congrats in advance to them. Congrats to both of those gentlemen on the awards. And very, very well deserved in uh, both cases. And not only are they great coaches, they're just really, really nice guys. I don't know Jeff, but I know Eddie. He's a great guy. He always, uh, whether I'm doing these games with you or other games here at Connor, he always uh, gets me all the information, these great stat packs, all sorts of great tidbits and information. And he's also a very proud year delayed Chicago Cubs fan who got to experience something that some of us may never get to experience, Pete, which is bliss when it comes to your team's winning championships. Well, your Mets will see success before my Reds, but... That is probably true. That is that is true. But still, hey... Uh, this, still upset that Joseph Daniel Votto lost by two votes in the uh, MVP award, but Stanton well deserved. Yep. Here's the opening kick of the third quarter, and the fair catch is made at the 30-yard line, and Connard will put it in play first down and 10. Again, going over the Connard offense, Jack Moore is your quarterback. Max Main is the running back. Stabnick, O'Connor, Orlovsky, and Furs the wideouts with Jared Reisner at center, Ben Dalton and Spencer Bavaro the tackles, Mario Volpe and John Perez the guards. With Hall defensively up front, Terry Brown, Justin Searles, Alex Dobbins, and Hugh Wells will go over the rest of the defense after first and 10 for more in the offense at the 30-yard line. Langevin the, is the uh, back to start here, Pete. And here's Langevin coming to the near side, and he runs for almost 10 yards before he's brought down by a combination of Michael Luna and James Gadu. It'll be second down and one. Upcoming. Interesting adjustment there by the coaching staff to start with Langevin in the second half and uh, paying dividends with that big carry on first down. And he goes for about five out to the 45, and that's a first down. The rest of the Hall defense, Solomons, Rivera, Tibball, and Searles at the linebacker spots, Richards and Crivetti at the corners, Thomas Crivetti and McHale are the safeties. First and 10 at the 45-yard line. Here's the handoff to the near side. Three for three, Langevin, and this time the Hall defense meets him and throws him down right at the point of attack. On the bottom of the pile, that's on number two, Nolan Tibwell, and we talked about him and called his name a lot in the opening half, Chris. Yeah, he really is just one of those guys. He's always finds a, has a nose for the football, has that, that unteachable trait of awareness. He's always around the ball wearing the number two for Hall. Undersized, but plays much bigger than he's... Uh, listed as he makes plays all over the field for this Warrior defense. And Langevin that time runs right into the arms of Captain Justin Searles, one of those seniors that we were talking about. Hugh Wells also in there on the stop. Great. And it'll be third down. It was a great job by the Hall defense. I'm a little surprised Connor's basically run the same play here on every play to start the second half. And uh, now they face a third and long, and you'd expect them to throw in this obvious passing situation as they look over to the sideline in lieu of a huddle. Third down and 10 at the 45. It was four runs for Langevin, and now back to pass. Here's Moore. Has all kinds of time. Now the rush is on. He has to run to the near side. Turns the corner, 45, 50, still on his feet. Has the first down and more, and finally upended and knocked out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Thomas Gravetti knocked him out of bounds along with Dev Richards. Gain of about 20 on the play and a first down. Well, Moore is uh, hobbling a little bit, and that is a, a big problem if he can't tough it out. He is a senior. You would expect he'd have to be carried off the field before he would leave as he's a tough kid. Every time he runs the football, gets big yardage, and that's the second time he's been faced with uh, a long yardage situation, and he is, has done it all with his speed and power down the sideline. Had a 15-yard run for a first down on a third down conversion in the opening half. Ran for 20 right there. Fourth down conversion as well. Yeah. 
Here's Langevin trying to turn the right corner, and he gets down near the 30-yard line. Gain of about five on the play. Setting up a second down and five. And it's Gabe Solomons on the bottom of the pile that time for the Warriors. You asked me what you thought uh, Coach Sersosmo might have said at halftime. I'm guessing he challenged his offensive line based on the way they've started this second half, running the football on every play. I'm guessing that's what you've seen as uh, they're trying to go downhill against this much smaller front and really exploit their weakness, which is uh, the strength of Connard's offensive line. Seventh play of the drive. First six of them been all runs. Moore wanted to throw. He's going to run again. Near side, 30, 25, 20. First down and Moore. Finally knocked out of bounds near the 15-yard line. Solomon's again pushed him out. Another big game. First down, Connor. I almost think that was a design quarterback draw, the way that he sold that fake. Might have been an option for another play down the field, but uh, he had great blocking once he escaped the pocket. Moore again showing he is a dynamic runner, picking up 10 yards a pop. There's Langevin, gets about four before Tibble brought him down. So a drive that started back at their 30-yard line, and they've moved 59 yards down to the 11, all on the ground. Ninth play of the drive upcoming, already inside of 8.45 to play in the third quarter. Connor trying for their first lead as we're tied at 17. Langevin this time drops the ball, dives on top of it, and comes up with it as he was brought to the turf. Joseph Dowd brought him down. And it'll be third down. Yeah, Langevin is fortunate there as he was uh, trying to make something out of nothing. And he maybe made one move too many and was stripped. Very fortunate. The ball bounced back into his bread basket to avoid disaster for the Chieftains. Third and seven at the Hall 13-yard line. Here's the throw to the near side, incomplete. Good defensive coverage. I think getting a, a fingertip on it was uh, Richards on the near sideline. It'll be fourth down. Another interesting call here for head coach Matt Sersosimo. And they're going to send out the kicking unit and uh, the luxuries of having a, a great field goal kicker. So here's Regan. Already connecting one for one today. He's 10 for 11 on the season. This will be a 30-yard attempt from the near hash. Boot is on the way. Has plenty of distance, and it is good. And for the first time today, the Connor Chieftains are in front. 7.58 to play in the third. Connor 20, Hall 17, as you continue to watch West Hartford High School Sports here on Cable Channel 5 as presented by the War Chief Sports Council. The War Chief Sports Council would also like to send out congratulations to former Connard swimming and lacrosse coach Will Hunter as he was inducted into the Connecticut High School Coaches Hall of Fame this past Thursday. Hunter, the fourth Connard coach to receive that distinction. He joins George Beaudry and legendary football coaches Bob McKee and Rob Sersosimo. Again, congratulations to Will Hunter. So here's David Regan. Teeing it up at the 40-yard line. And, Chris, what a luxury to have such a field goal kicker in a tight game like this. Not something you see on every high school football team, for sure. Somebody has 11 field goals on the season. Absolutely not, and uh, it, it's it's a, a huge bonus, especially in a tight game like this. You're right, where uh, every point matters. And now they've inched in front for the first time. It's up to Hall to find a big play. And here's Devin Richards on the return. Crosses the 25. And he'll be stopped at around the 27-yard line. And Hall will go on offense for the first time in the second half after a 17-yard return. That offense includes Andrew Nicholas, the quarterback. Leo Dionisio. And Elijah Bryan are the running backs. James Gadu, Tom Cravetti, Nolan Tibball are the wideouts. And the big guys up front, Gavin Baker at center. Hugh Wells and Justin Searles at the tackles. Brandon Beecher, Josh Kurzman are the guards. Connor defensively, Matt Walsh on the nose. Defensive ends are Colby Jones and K.J. Chazelle. The outside linebackers are Parker and Haggerty. The insiders are Tim Simplicio and John Kirkland. First and 10 at the 27-yard line. Here's the handoff to Bryant. Tries to cut to his left, and he's brought down at the 29-yard line. Kirkland 
among those in on the stop that time for the Chieftains. Again, to finish off the Connor defense, the corners are Chris Lamarco and Chris Chakura, and the safeties are Max Main and Gabe Suarez. Gain of one on the play. It'll be second down and nine. I think that was actually Desmond Richards uh, getting his first touch on offense today. We saw a lot more of him earlier this year. First time they've gone to him here in the second half. Here's Dionisio trying to turn the corner on the near side, and he's going to be wrapped up and brought down. Chakura leading the charge defensively. And it sets up a third down and long. Great lateral pursuit that time by the counter defense. Really surprised they haven't gone back to Elijah Bryant on the inside. They had so much success four or five times running that same play, almost like a trap up the middle with Bryant. And uh, they keep trying to go to the perimeter, and these counter corners are really cheating up on the outside and taking that away. So uh, it's going to be tough for Hall to have success on the outside if they're going to try to run on this chieftain defense third down and eight they were very successful in the first half with the third down conversions early leading to their 17 points we'll see what they do here straight drop for nicholas sets up the screen here's dionisio at the 30 and he's going to be stopped well well shy of the first down flag down on the play boy that's going to be a late hit that's going to be another mental mistake by the chieftains i'm pretty sure let's let's wait and see it's pointing over at the chieftain sideline might be a sideline warning or a. Uh... And Master Sasmo out on the field, very, very hot. At the near side official. They're going to take the flag and away. They're going to take it away. Wow, they wave off the penalty. So Coach C wins that battle. And well, you know, they always say that that first tee sometimes. Uh, Sometimes buys you some points in the long run. It's sure. way harder to pick up the second one. Right. Different sport, but a similar idea here is uh, that that first penalty he got after the uh, first drive of the game might have paid dividends there. He's made his presence felt to the same official, mind you. Right. On that sideline. Bob Heimgartner, our referee today. So that last play goes for a four-yard loss. Sets up a fourth down and 13. And as Chris pointed out in the first half, Nicholas, not only is the quarterback, he's the punter as well. And it's blocked. It's blocked. And the Chieftain special teams rise to the occasion. The big play right there. And at the 22-yard line, a big opportunity upcoming for Connor after the block by Tim Simplicio, who went straight up the field. Yeah, you know, I was thinking in the pre – that's only the second time they punted today. I was thinking on the previous uh, – time they punted the risk with that whole thing of setting your quarterback six yards back and then moving him a couple more yards back it's a much shorter punt to kick uh, distance than you would see from a conventional setup right and and it's it's very easy to line up up the middle and just beat one guy and you have a great chance the earlier game i saw this year they had two different punts blocked from that same formation so it really puts the onus on the offensive line to prevent them uh, but uh, just a great play by simplicio who is a a key player on all, in all phases for this Connor team. He's a monster at linebacker, and uh, the big special teams play right there gives Connor a big opportunity here to add to a 20 to 17 lead. Orlovsky off the jet sweep, tries to cut to his right. Crivetti has the penetration and then finally thrown down at the 28 yard line. So a big loss on the play. Great initial penetration by Todd Crivetti, the six foot two, 186 pound junior. He got in there and disrupted the play from the get go. I don't know if it's just uh, old school, but I, I just don't understand why both these teams are insistent on running to the outside and running so many reverses and sweeps when they're having success up the middle of the field. That's got to be incomplete. Pass is incomplete, intended for Furs, who had the big first half. Called his name a bunch of times. He had at least a half dozen receptions in the opening half. And by the way, in the process for Furs, he became the fourth Connor wide receiver to go over the 500-yard marks in receiving this year. Yeah, really great balance on offense for Connor. I almost wonder if uh, they they don't rely on the pass enough, though. Even though they spread it out so well, I think uh, they, they are clearly at their strongest because it puts more in situations where he gets out of the pocket and is able to run the football as well. And sure. he is clearly their most dynamic runner. So I, I, I'm surprised they, they don't go to that well a little more often. And we'll talk about more after this play as he's back to pass, throws there. It's Furs again. 
and it's incomplete. Had it and dropped it down at the 11 yard line. Maybe the weather for the first time really coming into play there. Yeah, with the lights on, as you talked about, Chris, and the rain starting to fall, a little slippery football out there. But here's Moore, who's averaging coming in, throwing 35 passes per game. So today, an aberration with them trying to establish more of a running game. Yeah, and, you know, that's a reflection of, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, against uh, in a rivalry game, you want to establish yourself physically and really, you know, get those body blows in. But... Uh, all doing a nice job for the most part stopping the run today. Fourth down and 14. Here's Moore. And he's going to be wrapped up and sacked by Rivera. Jovan Rivera, the junior, gets in there. And they'll turn it over on downs. That'll be first and 10 Hall. Huge defensive stand for them after Connor was set up after the, the punt block. Huge defensive stand. You know, you get the punt block, but I, I go back to the first down play when they tried to run the reverse with Orlovsky. It really put him behind the down and distance, and, and credit Hall for making all the plays there, but I think they were able to get away with uh, Connor really going to their strength, away from Connor going to their strengths, plus the key drop when he was wide open on the well-thrown ball there on third down. So uh, Hall doing their part, but catching a couple breaks along the way, and now they're right back in business, only down three with, the ball at the 30-yard line. 20 to 17, Connor. First and 10, Hall. 5:15 to play here in the third quarter. Throwing left side to Gadu. It's complete at the 33. Short pickup on the play. Chris Lamarco had the coverage and the tackle. Gain of three. He'll set up a second down and seven. I think uh, Hall needs to just try to grind it out here. Work some of this clock. Shorten the game. Three wides to the near side. Gadu, the lone receiver to the top of your screen. Back to pass. Throws over the middle. It's incomplete. And a flag on the play. That was the right call. Yeah. Simplicio that time nailing Gadu. I disagreed with the call in the first series. That one is a carbon copy of what you would call a defenseless receiver. A hit to the head. He was blindsided. It checks all the boxes. That's an easy 15-yard penalty. You just hope that Gadu is not uh, too badly shaken up as they're still tending to him down on the field. But that's, that's going to be a clear 15-yard penalty against Simplicio. Leading receiver on this team is James Gadu. Came into this contest, 26 grabs on the year for 293 yards. I don't think he's, he's featured much, if at all, in this game, though. I think that was no. the first time they've really... Yeah. Gone for him that I can recall. Connard's done a good job of keeping him under wraps. And the very, very good news is he gets up to uh, his own feet and leaves under most of his own power. So the 15-yard infraction gives Hall the ball at the 49-yard line with the first down and 10 at 436 to play here in the third. A little surprised this weather is kind of... Uh, Seem to take away from the atmosphere. The crowd seems to have settled down a little bit as the rain has come in, but it's still a one possession game and Hall is uh, right in this football game. First and 10 at the 49. This is Dionisio trying to stutter step his way across the 50. He's into Connor territory, brought down at the 48, gain of three on the play and it'll be second down and seven. Nice patient run by Dionisio. I've been impressed by him today. He's, uh, yeah. he's really showed great ability and vision to uh, make something out of nothing time and time again. Second down, long seven at the 48-yard line. Long snap count by Nicholas. Fakes the handoff, throws it far side, has his man running across the 40 and down to about the 30-yard line. There's McHale. Nice play there for the Warriors. He's had a great day, McHale. Leading receiver by a long ways for Hall and a well-timed play that time as they've been running the ball with uh, Dionisio and they used him as a decoy, pulled it out and a well-executed quick screen that time. 17-yard advance, and here come the Warriors again. First and 10 at the Chieftains 31. 
And off to Dionisio, and he's tripped up as he crosses the 30-yard line. First one in the backfield that time, leading the charge was John Parker. Pete, you know what I really like what Hall's doing is they have made a concerted effort on this drive to really slow down. Not only their, their tempo as a whole, but they're really checking with the sideline, getting the look that they want being very patient, and, and by doing so, really working this clock in the third quarter. Yeah, they want to shorten the game, Chris, and uh, at the same time, try to go back in front. Second and nine at the 30. Showing blitz was countered. Here they come off the corner. Good job by Nicholas to step away. Heaves it deep downfield, incomplete with a flag down on the play. There was a lot of pushing down there. Great play by Nicholas to buy himself some extra time. They just kind of threw it up there. But, uh, you know, a lot of times good things happen when you just throw the ball down there as the defensive backs are at a real disadvantage. They're going to get a, uh, let's see where the penalty took place. It should be half the distance. It might be 15 yards. The inside the 30, right yeah, at the they 30. Were, they so, were right so at it the should 30. So it should be 15 yards down to uh, just outside the 15-yard line, I think. And the big play gives Hall the first down and 10 via the penalty. Ball advanced the Kingston red zone. It's a 15-yard penalty now, Pete. Right. But any time from here on out, it'll be half the distance to the goal and not a first down. <laughs> first and 10 at the 15. Here's the handoff to Bryant. Tests the uh, right side of the uh, countered uh, defensive front. Gets two or three. It'll be second down and long. They were the masters of the big play in the uh, in the opening half. They had the three runs of 30 yards or more as a team. And uh, Connard's uh, shored up defensively in that regard, Chris. But, uh, again, 12 yards away are the Hall Warriors from taking the lead. You know, I, I've been so impressed with this drive from Hall. They've really done everything just about perfectly. I wouldn't be uh, – I, I wouldn't go anywhere but running the ball north and south here and not try to outthink themselves here and just – Try to pound the football. Here's Nicholas throwing right side towards the end zone. Incomplete. It was intended for McHale. He's looking back for a flag to the near side official. He's not going to get one. And it's going to be third down and eight at the 13-yard line. Great job in coverage in the secondary. But uh, there again, I'm surprised. It's probably four down territory. We saw a short field goal made. I, I just They're doing a nice job running the football. I'd love to see him keep running with Brian. Even that previous carry, he only got two, but he worked for that two, and he's, he's a tough guy to bring down. And You know, he's probably going to bust one or two more before the end of the day. And off to Dionisio, and they got him by the ankles and drag him down shy of the 10-yard line. Simplicio in on the stop. Colby Jones also at the bottom of the pile. They're bringing in Harrington to try a field goal here, Pete. It's going to be it's about a 29 or 30 yard attempt. Yeah, and, and again, you know, with the this is another. You talk about the rain. This is it's a spot where the the rain could be a factor. Gadu puts it down. Kick is on the way, and it is no good. Hit the crossbar. He was that close to tying the game. He had made his first field goal of the season in the opening half, but he's now one for four on the season, and the big miss keeps Connard in front, 20 to 17, with 79 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Game of inches. It looked like there was great pressure from the edge there. I don't know if that impacted the kick, uh, but uh, he needed 29, and it, he got 28 and three quarters. And that one rotation of the football was the difference. Hitting the upright, that close to tying it up, and uh, tough break for the Warriors who had a great drive there, and they uh, are stopped without any points. So Connor dodges a bullet there. They go back on offense. Hand off to Langevin, running to the near side, and he's punished across the 20-yard line by McHale. Great tackle by McHale, playing both sides of the football, exploding to make the play. A very impressive uh, performance by the junior this afternoon. So out at the 24-yard line. Second down, four more. He pump fakes, has time. Now he wants to run to the near side, and he's going to be dragged out of bounds. Devin Richards leading the defensive charge. 
And it'll be third down and long for the Chieftains. Chieftains just determined to establish the run here, no matter what it takes. And uh, the Warriors, credit them, they've been pretty much short tacklers on the conventional run plays the majority of this game. Struggled sure. with the contain at times, but they've done a nice job when they've just lined up and tried to run the football of stopping them. Big third down here for Connor. Third and six at the 24-yard line. You see the two wides to either side. Moore throws over the middle. Caught! There's Stabnik. Has the first down and Moore as he crosses the 40 out to the 42-yard line. Gain of 18 and a first down. Big play to his big possession receiver. You wonder how... Uh, Stabnik could be open on a play like that, but then you realize that's a guy who's got over 70 catches, and that's why. Big play by their big receiver. And there's Langevin again, powers his way out near midfield. And that could be the uh, final play of the third quarter unless uh, Connor gets one off here in a hurry. 15 seconds, clock running. Second down and short. Here's Langevin to the near side, and he's dragged down at about the 47 yard line. As he crossed into Hall territory and that'll do it for play here in the third quarter. So just one score here in the third, it was a Regan field goal. And with 36 minutes in the books, the score is Connor 20 and Hall 17. We're back with fourth quarter action right after this on WHC-TV Channel 5 and online at whctv.org as presented by the War Chief Sports Council. Thanks to our fine Channel 5 crew on site and back at the controls at Town Hall. Pete Lamoureux, Chris Grace back with you. Fourth quarter about to begin. Countered up 20 to 17. It's first and 10 for the Chieftains at the Hall 47 yard line. It's Orlowski going in motion to the near side. Pass to the near side. There's Orlowski with the catch and he's down to the 40 yard line. He's upended by Crivetti after a seven yard advance. It'll be second and three. It's a critical drive. Not only for the Conard offense, but the all defenses. Uh, they cannot afford to get down by more than one score here. They've got to get a big stop if they're going to find a way to stick around. Here's Langevin, who's been the workhorse here in the second half. And he goes off the right side and has the first down for the Chieftains. Gain of four, first and ten for Conard down at the Hall 36 yard line. Two wides to either side. Moore taking his time. Hands off to Langevin, runs to his left this time. Shoes the initial tackle, and then he's gang tackled at 35. Short pickup on the play. Tibball and Rivera combine on the stop. And we have an injured Paul Warrior down on the turf. It's Alex Dobbins. Alex Dobbins. Starting defensive end, also the backup quarterback to Nicholas if something were to happen to him. And that stops the clock at 11.02 here in a regulation time. Again, if you join us late, it's an electrifying start for the Hall Warriors. Decided underdog in this game. Came out firing on all cylinders. Ran for over 100 yards in the first quarter. At a 17-7 lead at the end of one. Connard answering with 10 points in the second to get things even at the break. 
And then the only score in the third quarter, the Regan field goal. As good news for Hall and Dobbins, he's able to get up, although he's going to limp off the field. And that's where we stand, Chris, 20 to 17. Connard in front, ball at the Hall 35 yard line. Yard last Second down and nine upcoming. And nine. Furs is lined up far to the top of your screen. Orlovsky in a slot to the left. Max Main, the ball carrier this time. And he gets down to about the 32 yard line. Hugh Wells in on the stop. Down to the 33. So a big third down player. Re sure. Really, really big because if they, if they get a couple, they could probably go for it. And uh, any any chance to get back in the game, Hall needs to stop. All kinds of time for more. Now the rush is on, and he heaves it up to the near side, and he just throws it away. Good pressure that time. Hugh Wells along with Justin Searles. Boy, Coach Sersosimo. Out onto the field, was unhappy about something. And uh, you could tell he he's leaving it all out there as well. And now, tricky decision. I almost you, might you like You like this goal here, Chris? Or I don't no? know. I mean, if you're, you know, it's not great field position if you don't get it. Yeah, I would go for it. It's a fourth and seven. Throw it to the near side for Stabnik. He's got it. And a first down. That looked pretty easy. So the completion, good for 11, and a big first down at the 24. 85, he's just always open, Pete. I, I would go to him more, I'll tell you what. I mean, there's uh, there's Maine with a flag down on the play. Yeah, that's one of those holding calls that's going to turn it into a first and 20. So the Chieftains shoot themselves in the foot after converting on the fourth and seven. And yeah, they're going to be backed up 10. Holding is just such a huge call in any football game at any level. I mean, normally it eliminates what was a big run play, and it seems like such an unjust penalty to move them back 10 yards. Right. When there's holding on every play. But, uh, again, I don't make the rules. Just report on them. So first down and 20. Back at the Hall 34-yard line. They play action fake and a quick hitter to Orlovsky, and he slides down to the 25 with the reception. He got most of the penalty yardage back. Down to about the 26, they're going to spot him. Gain of about eight on the play. And it'll be second down and 12. Now Connard starting to go a little bit more deliberately on offense, trying to work the clock which winds down inside of 920 to play here in the fourth quarter. Moore conversing with head coach Matt Sersasimo. Fake the hand off to Maine. Throws a deep left side, diving attempt, and it's incomplete down at about the 10 yard line. Looking for Orlovsky, it goes awry. It'll be third down and 12. I like that play call. He had him, just undershot him a little bit. Orlovsky was running a corner route and kind of had to come back to the football. And maybe again, the, uh, the rain and the uh, moisture caused that one to go through his arms. But if they, he let him, he would have walked into the end zone. Third and a dozen. Moore's throw and Stabnik had fallen down and that's why the pass goes incomplete. Stabnik was gonna probably run the slant that time. That's where Moore was delivering the football. So another fourth down opportunity here, fourth down and 12. They're going to once again leave the offense out on the field. Critical for Hall to make sure they keep their eyes on Moore, not to let him escape the pocket here as he's done a few times, these long yardage situations, and focus in on Stabnik as well. Those are the two biggest threats on the field for the Chieftains. Fourth down and 12 at the 26-yard line. Straight drop for Moore, flags down on the play, and they're gonna whistle it dead. Coach C out on the field. And it's a procedure call against the Chieftains. That'll back him up five. 
So fourth and 17. Well, you could pooch it now if you wanted to. 17 is not an easy amount of yardage to get. Right. As long as you don't put it in the end zone, it's a good play. Sure. But, uh, well, outside the 30-yard line. I might just run Stabnik on a post and take my chances that he could outjump whoever's defending him here. Use that uh, six foot two frame to his advantage. So here's Moore. Steps up, and he's going to be brought down. Hugh Wells leading the charge that time. He was also wrapped up on the play by Solomons, and they turn it over on downs. And once again, it's a bend, not break defense for the Warriors, and the offense gets it back. Down three with 8.48 to go. Second time in this half that the Warriors' defense has needed to come up big, deep in their own territory. Second time they did just that, and uh, this one is set up again, Pete, to go right down to the wire. Hall with the football needing to go 68 yards to take the lead, and uh, I wouldn't put it past them at this point the way that this game's been going. Right. Warriors offense takes to the field. It's been a lot of fun throughout, Chris, no doubt about it. And it'll be high drama as we go down the stretch here in the final 848 of the contest. First and 10 at the 32. This is Dev Richards, and he wants to throw the ball, has a man open downfield. It's caught by Cravetti, far sideline, wrapped up and out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Devin Richards to Todd Cravetti, and a big gainer for Hall on first down. Well, that's all on the play calling there. What a well-designed play. Right at the last minute, I saw him turn and thought it could be a pass. Looked up, he was wide open. If he could have thrown that a little further, he would still be running back through the track. However, that's a big gain, and now the Warriors are in business, Pete. What a call. 32 yards, Chris, down to the 36, first and 10. Here's Dionisio to the near side. Runs into his own blocker and then is wrapped up and thrown out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Pushed off at the near side by Chakura. But a positive gain. Picked up about a half dozen on the play. Nice run again, and they're staying ahead of the chains. Well, I got to go back to that, that reverse pass they just broke out. A really well-designed play. And uh, if You're right, Chris. If he had led them, that was an easy, easy six. He had to come back to catch the ball. But again, it's a running back who doesn't throw that often, so he'll take the plus 32. Second and five at the 31. This is Dev Richards, and he's going to be thrown down for a short loss on the play. Good defensive presence by the Connor Chieftains that time. Tim Simplicio made the stop, and it'll be third down and six. Clock running inside of 7.50 to play here in the fourth quarter. We had 34 total points in the first half, just three here in the second half. Huge play for Hall now, definitely in four down territory. Third down and six at the 32 of Connor. Play action fake, Nicholas has it, has time, runs to the near side, still has it. Lobs it up incomplete, it was intended for Gadu at the 25 yard line. Good pressure. By well, the guys that Master Sassimo call the Twin Towers on defense, Kirkland and Simplicio got in Nicholas's face. Still a catchable ball for Gadu. It would have been shy of the first down anyhow, and it's fourth down territory anyways, fourth and six. Nice play by Nicholas to extend it, give his receiver a chance. It would have been a tough grab. You're right, it would have made it a much more manageable fourth down, but where they are on the field with the time and score, they're never going to think about doing anything other than going forward here. Right, fourth and six. At the Conard 32. All down by three with 7.23 to go in regulation time. Here's Nicholas. Throws it over the middle. Complete. Has his man. There's McHale again inside the 20 with a first down for Hall. Jack McHale, have yourself a day, sir. Big time throw. Big time catch. Got open. This wet weather was able to bring it in. And now the Warriors are... 16 yards away from taking the lead, Peter. We have ourselves a contest. Oh, my. 16-yard advance to the 16. First and 10 for the Warriors. Nicholas, back to pass. The rush is on. He eludes it. Has a man open in the end zone. It's caught. Touchdown, Tibble. 
Nolan Tibble on the 16 yard pass grab from Nicholas and the Hall Warriors have their first second half lead. It's 23-20 with 6.43 to go. What a play by Nicholas to buy some time under serious pressure through his best ball of the day and Tibble, we talked about it Pete, some guys just have the awareness, they find the football, found the football in the biggest moment of the day yet for Hall. So here's Harrington and the kick is blocked. And it remains a three point game and that is critical in this game because Connor obviously has a good field goal kicker. So timeout on the field, 6.43 to go, 23-20 the score, Hall back in front. You know, Pete, again, I've seen all afternoon in every kicking situation, Hall does something really strange on their, their kicks. It's almost like a short snap maybe to buy some extra yardage for their, for their, their uh, place kicks as well as their punts. And Connor has nearly blocked every single one of them, and it was only a matter of time. The first field goal almost got blocked. The second one, I believe, was partially blocked, and then they just got it on that extra point. You're right. That keeps it at a three-point game. Connored with 6.43 left. All their timeouts need to go down the field, score a touchdown, a win, or a field goal. To extend this one uh, a little further to make, make for an even more fun finish. Exactly. Back to that last touchdown, Chris. What a throw by Nicholas. Here's a kid that comes in, three touchdowns, 16 picks on the season. Five to one uh, picked a touchdown ratio in the wrong direction and, and what a rivalry game. game speed it, yeah. it, it it creates a it creates a whole different level of uh whole different level of excitement on the inside and on the outside and they're they're channeling all of that all of that juju if you will to uh to the a 23 20 lead Harrington's we got a whistle kick. And a whistle before the kick, before it was fair oh, caught hey, at the you're gonna, you're gonna love this one. This is another obscure Connecticut high school rule. When kicking off, there's actually a rule about how high you can kick the football. Oh, come on. For the, I swear to you, for the safety oh, of I the believe, players. I, I believe that you. is what the call was there. He kicked it too high, they'll be penalized five yards and they're gonna have to kick it again because he kicked that, it off too high. That's not my disbelief towards you, that's my disbelief towards the CIAC. It is really remarkable. <laughs> that is judged to be an unsafe kick. Wow. Even though you can call what is a fair catch, which is what they did, which makes it as safe as it can be. It's a fair catch. Yeah. CIAC on a day-to-day -day basis never ceases to amaze me. So Arrington from the 35 this time. And this one's going to be returned. Fielded at the 37. Orlovsky at the 50. Orlovsky inside the 45 down to the 42. Terrific return that time by Ryan Orlowski. And Connard set up in business. First and 10 on the Hall side of the field with 6.34 to play. If that is indeed what that call was for the flag, I did not see a signal for, for an offside or a false start. I'm pretty sure that's what the signal was. I wonder that how we a, would recognize that signal. That is a really, really, really tough break for the Warriors yeah. as they now will lose 20 plus yards of field position. And Connard is only about 20 yards away from setting up a field goal to tie the game and 40 yards away right. from winning this one. And then keep in mind, Regan hit a field goal last week, 37 yards against Maloney. So they just need to get down to the 20 to get in his range. First and 10 at the 40. Quick throw to the left side. That's Furs out of a tackle and knocked out of bounds at about the 35, 34-yard line. Gain of about a half dozen on the play. Now they're going to say a five-yard gain, five and it'll be second down and five. five. Moore takes the snap, fakes the handoff, quick hitter over the middle. He's got Stabnik still on his feet, and finally corralled and brought down at the 22-yard line. He kept Thomas Cravetti on his back that time, took him for extra yardage, gain of about 13 and a first down. Looked like Mark Bavaro on that one. If anyone out there knows who Mark Bavaro is, YouTube him if you don't know. Heck of a play, and uh, I think we had a whistle before that snap. No, we didn't. Okay, they're going to give him credit for, for five yards. Pete, they're ready to go again. Inside the 20-yard line. Hurry up 
Throw to the near side, almost picked, and then intercepted. It was deflected and picked off by the Warriors. Crevetti that time. Todd Crevetti off the tip, initially tipped by Jovan Rivera, and the Connor drive stalls first in 10 Hall in the other direction with 5.53 to go. Connor's not going to want to hear this, but they caught a break that Crevetti intercepted that pass because the first corner who stepped up would still be running if he would have caught it. That was an easy pick six. Slipped through his hands, and Crevetti made a great athletic play to pick it off. So now the Warriors will try to work some of this clock. And uh, tell you, they've been the hungrier team, it has seemed, all day long, playing with more urgency, playing with more tenacity. Yeah. And now they are just under six minutes away from a, a shock upset in this rivalry. At the 15-yard line of Hall, the countered drive stalls. And now here come the Warriors, up 23-20. Here's Nicholas. Hands off to Denisio. Cuts to his right, still on his feet. Good balance that time as he approaches the 25-yard line. Gained about nine on the play. It'll set up a second down and short. Leo Denisio. Averaged only about 2.3 yards per carry on the season coming into today. He and Elijah Bryan have well exceeded all totals and all expectations here this afternoon from the running standpoint of the Hall offense. By the way, you made the Mark Pavaro reference before Spencer, who starts on the offensive line for Connor, second cousin. Yeah, there you go. It all comes together. I didn't know that, but it all comes together. High snap. Dionisio tries to run up the middle and he's brought down shy of the first down. Colby Jones plugged up the hole that time. Colby Jones, by the way, Matt Sosmo told me the other night has the unfortunate distinction of being a Miami Dolphins fan. Well, you can't have everything, right? Can't, can't have everything, can't have anything. At least, at least he hasn't waited 40 years for a title like I have. Oh. Sab stories. Third and one. <laughs> <laughs> Huge play here for Hall to maintain their offense. Nicholas on the keeper. Oh, he's going to be stood up right at that 25-yard line. It's going to depend on the spot. Chris Grace thinks it's a first down. And it is a first down. He did cross the 25 as the first down. I've just seen enough spotting of the football at this level to know that uh, they'll give it to him. Sometimes it's about where the line's been standing, not where the football goes. And that's huge because oh, yeah. tick, tick, tick goes the clock oh, inside yeah. of 4-10 to play here in the fourth quarter. 23-20 Hall, first and set at their own 25. The two wides to the top of your screen. Hand off Dionisio. Wrapped up and thrown down for a loss back at the 24-yard line. Good defensive effort by the Chieftains that time. Cole Haggerty made the stop. I think if the Chieftains get a stop on this play, you might see them use their first timeout. Already down to 338. Got all three. You got to save some time for your offense. And Hall might let it run down and use a timeout of their own here, but it sure. looks like they're just being deliberate. Why not? Nicholas had looked to the far side to Frank Robinson for the call. Second and 11 at the 24-yard line. Play action fake. Nicholas runs, throws, complete across the 30. He's got Dionisio, and he has a first down across the 35-yard line. Big play right there at the 307 mark. What a play call, and what an effort by Nicholas. Again, looked to be dead to rights, and once he escaped, that first amount of pressure, I knew there was going to be an open receiver just based on the situation, made the throw. And Dionisio, credit the, the effort by Dionisio to dive forward and move the chains. And now the Chieftains are in trouble. They've got about one series to get a stop to where their timeouts are set up. And then they might have no time left if they don't. Hall can almost run it all the way down if they can get one more first down. At the 36-yard line, first and 10. This time it's Elijah Bryan. Tests the right side and gets out to the 38. And there's the first time out taken by Matt Sassimo and the Chieftains. Comes at 2.35 to go here in the fourth quarter. 
Gain of a couple, it'll be second down and eight. Pete, you talked about uh, how the Dolphins haven't been able to uh, win a championship in 40 years. You know who has to wait no longer to win a championship, Pete? Who's that? The Yale Bulldogs. All right. Thanks for the uh, good info. Well, they're up 24-3 with six minutes left. I might have just put the kibosh on nah, there. But. Nah, that's, it's not a traditionally great Harvard offense. So I think uh, for the first time, I believe, since the legendary Carm Coza stepped down more than 20 years ago, they are going to have their first outright Ivy League title on the same day that the Hall Warriors could uh, spring the big upset here. Well, back to this one now, and I just wanted to let you know on that. Thank 235, you. two timeouts. Hall, if they can get a first down here, and even better for Hall, if they can get a first down using two plays, Conard will basically have to force a turnover of some kind. We saw last year's game, we thought the game was over and there was a late turnover. Right. Second and eight after the timeout. Nicholas on the keeper, has running room, has daylight. He limps over the 45, dives near the 46-yard line. Could have another Hall first down, and they will. What a play call. They run speed option with Nicholas, a design run for the quarterback. They blocked it up perfectly, and uh, now the Chieftains are in big-time trouble. They're 40, not, they're not going to use a timeout there. All uh, assistant coaches up on top of the roof. The Hall barring, assistant uh, coaches didn't see the the official hadn't wound the clock yet, which is why they, they waited. He's just watching. Yeah. He's just watching the officials who didn't wind the play clock yet. So that was well orchestrated. Just but over two minutes to play. First anxiety and ten. everywhere. Yeah, at the 47-yard line. Ahead. There's Dionisio. Talk about a gang tackle by the Chieftains that time. Gets to uh, midfield, and that's Brian actually on the carry as he gets off the turf, and another timeout for Connard. Their second comes with 150 to go, and it precedes a second down in about seven. So if Hall were to run the ball two more times here and not get a first down, we'd be looking at Connard getting the ball with about a minute left. And probably a long field if it's a decent punt. If they could protect and not have the punt blocked, right? Yeah. So, uh, but you made a good point about every time they've either kicked or punted today, it's been an adventure for the Hall uh, offensive line against the special teams of Connor. Yeah. So that may be a case if we get that far where they bring the house and try to set up the punt block. But first things first. Ball security is the most important thing for Hall. You get a first down, that's a bonus, but... Boy, they've been so aggressive all day long. I'm not going to say they won't throw the football, but if they had the guts to to uh, to run a play action of some kind or maybe get the quarterback outside again, this game is over if they get a first down. So, Big play here, second down and seven, right at midfield. And off to Bryant, and he gets to the 45-yard line. Gain of about five on the play. Sets up about a third down and two. We're going to save that last time out for after this play. This is the ball game here, Pete. They get a first down. They can go into the victory formation. This right. is it right here. And, and Chris, by the way, they got a lousy spot on that last run. Should have been right at the 45-yard line. It's closer to the 46. Every inch matters here, so it's a third down. And about three yards to go. Clock winding down to 115 to play in regulation time. Hall 23, Connor 20. Here's the handoff to Bryant. And he's going to be gang tackled and stopped. And Connor immediately with Matt Sersosimo on the field calls timeout with 105 to play. It'll be fourth down for Hall. Another interesting call here for the Warriors. I don't know. I don't think they're, I mean, you can't. You got, you got to find a way to, to punt the football. The only concern, obviously, is that they have uh, have struggled protecting, but I don't know. You, 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 put, you put an extra guy in there. I don't know. You, you, you snap it a little further back. You just got to get the punt away. You just got to do it. Yeah, standard punt formation, 13 yards back. They've been, they've been eight or nine yards back today. They have to go all the way back. How about this? How about a hard count? You try to 
Get them offside. How about you bring the offense out there and you run a hard count and you try to uh, you try to win the game with a penalty? Yeah. Because in high school, that could work. In high school, once you cross the line of scrimmage, that's it. That's yeah, the you penalty. Can't get back. You can't yeah. get back. I don't yeah. know. That's not a terrible idea either. No, that's a that's a actually a very good idea. Why not? Right. With you got five, timeouts. If yeah. it doesn't work, you can call a timeout or you can take the five yards. Right. And and you know if you're going to punt anyways, the five yards not going to matter here too. No, but I mean, Hall's not going to need their timeouts anymore. So right. We'll see. Looks like they have uh, the offense out on the field. Fourth down at the 46. Fourth and three for the Warriors. And now he drops back into uh, punt formation. He's only nine yards back. And he angles it to the near side, hits at the 30, and goes out of bounds near the 25-yard line. So a minute to go. And again, keep in mind, Regan already has two field goals today. So you would have to go down to the Hall 20 to get him into decent range. So that means they'd have to go 54 yards in the next one minute. Exactly one minute to play here in the contest. Well, I'll tell you this. Connor has kind of been playing the second half a little bit conservatively. They're going to let it all go now. Here's Moore. The three wide outs to the top of the screen. And the whistle blows. A flag on the play. 12 men on the defense, Pete. Well, that's five yards of a help for the Chieftains, Chris. So the walk off five. Out to the 31-yard line. They want to reset the clock to First one down minute. Five. They need to put 2.2 seconds back on the clock, so a minute to go in regulation. So they have a minute, no timeouts, Pete. At the 31. Here's Moore with time. Near side, complete. As the man out of bounds, that's O'Connor on the reception. First down for the Chieftains. Grant O'Connor on the receiving end that time. Stepped out of bounds at the 42, gain of 11. First and 10, 54.9 seconds to go. Here's Moore again, near side. Knocked away, it was deflected at the 47 yard line. Rivera stepped in front of it that time, intended for Stabnik. He's had a nice game, Rivera. He's been close to a couple of interceptions. That one would have sealed it. You know, here's a chance now, if they want to run some sort of a pump and go, they might have a chance to hit, the, hit a home run. Second and 10 at the 41. Throws it left side, has Stabnik, it's complete. He does not get out of bounds though at the 47 yard line. If he could have moved just a yard to his left, he would have saved his team about 10 seconds. Clock running, 35 seconds to go. It's a third down and four at the 47. Here's Moore, pump fakes, still has time. Throws, incomplete. And it'll be fourth down with 25 seconds to go. On the play, Stabnik was shaken up and he is he is injured, and he's going to go down, which is the right play, and they will tend to him, and it's going to give them a free timeout. But more importantly, their best receiver is injured, and he was basically limp on that play as well. He, he played no part in that last play. He was just standing around. So he couldn't put any weight on that leg. I'm guessing diving for the sideline. He must have gotten rolled up trying to get out of bounds. Yeah. Huge loss, certainly for the Chieftains, and they would tend to him. So again, 25 and 6 tenths seconds to go. And when we resume play, it'll be fourth down for the Chieftains. They need four. They're at their 47. They have to get to the Hall 49 in order to extend the football game. Well, what I would key for here, especially with Stabnik out, is the first thing you have to do is take away more getting the outside of running the football. Right. Because you have to imagine now that that's going to take away the, the one guy they're going to key on. If, if they're looking for anyone else, Orlovsky is the intermediate guy. Furs, if they're looking to go a little deeper down the field. But uh, you have to spy more here and not allow him to beat you with his legs. Prolong this game. This is the game, Pete. There it is. Fourth down and four at the 47-yard line. 25 seconds to go. Moore takes the snap. 
has time. He's going to run. He's got the first down. He's to the near sideline. 40, 35. He needs to get out of bounds, and he dives ahead and out of bounds at the 33-yard line. 16 seconds to go, and Hall could not keep Connard from getting the first down. Well, like I said, Pete, you've got to contain the quarterback yeah, you on that it, play, and he had an easy running lane. That was an easy first down. 19-yard gain, back to pass, throws it right sideline, incomplete, and he throws it away with 10.8 seconds to go. you got to figure they've, they've got to – they don't have enough time to, to, to throw the ball inside and not pick up a first down. If they get the first down, they could spike it and maybe be in field goal range. They're going to need at least at least that to have a decent shot at a field goal. They're at the 34, so they need at least 15 yards, you would think, to give them a decent attempt. Ten seconds to go at the 34. Here's Moore. Throws a little screen pass to Maine, and Maine is out of bounds. Very little advancement and four seconds to go. Thought that they could fool the Hall defense and they weren't fooled in the least. Problem is, even if that works, the clock might almost expire if he gets good yardage on that play. Pete just takes too long to develop. And now uh, they're going to try. Are they going to try the field goal? I think they are. This would be a 50 yard attempt. Boy. I believe the longest in Conard history is 47. So this would be. A school record out of the hold of Moore. Ball's placed down, and it's low. It's no good, and the Hall Warriors have won the contest. 23-20 the final. Hall springs the upset and end the season at 2-8. and eight. And they salvaged their season with a terrific win here today at McKee Stadium. And you can hear the jubilation of the coaching staff of the Hall Warriors. Final score, Hall 23, Connor 20. I don't I don't know what to say, Pete. I mean, just, uh, you know, you, you, you break out all the cliches before a game like this. You hear all the same thoughts. Oh, Hall is so bad this year. They've lost seven games in a row. This is going to be one-sided. But you tell yourself it's a rivalry game. There's passion. These people have grown up together. It means more. And then you see a game like this, and you just have to love sports because this is a team that has not come close to winning a game in the last two months. They're playing their rival who has, on paper, more talent. And they fought and they left it all out there and they came away with the win. And it's just a remarkable effort by Coach Robinson's team. And they deserve this win. They do. They went out and they took it. They weren't given anything. They took this win, 23-20. Add to this remarkable rivalry another great chapter. Yeah, it really was. This is one for the ages, no doubt. And again, uh, we talked about Hall may end the season at 2-8, and eight, but uh, they'll look back uh, with fond memories of this game here this afternoon. And this really salvages the season for you. I hate to say that at 2-8, and eight, but it really does. I mean, that's, like that's I the said, reality Like I of said all. in the pregame, Pete, I mean, 2-8 and eight is, is what it is, but it's a lot better than 1-9, and nine, and that 2 is worth about 10 when it comes to living in this town. So they're going to have uh, all these guys who are seniors are going to be able to say that they won this game, and, you know, they're, they, they're going to, to be walking a lot taller these next couple days before Thanksgiving vacation in West Hartford. Nicholas to Tibwall, that turns out to be the game winner in the fourth quarter. Only his fourth touchdown toss of the entire season, and none bigger than that one there. We're going to head down to the field, hopefully grab uh, Frank Robinson, the head coach for Hall, and one of his victorious players. Again, here the final score today, the Hall Warriors 23 and the Connor Chieftains 20. We'll be back with more right after this on WHC-TV Channel 5 as presented by the War Chief Sports Council. important would be for you guys to get off to a good start 17 points in the first quarter was certainly a good start I agree you know having the offense being able to move the ball was really important um, and it's not something we've done all year long necessarily um, but it was really important to be able to do that today I agree 
The running game was just terrific. Brian had great runs, Dionisio. I mean, you really had great balance with the attack. And then uh, Nicholas, uh, the big fourth quarter touchdown pass to Tibble. Oh, no doubt. You know, uh, you, you can't beat a team that's so good defensively if you're not being able to run it and throw it. And, uh, you know, we were fortunate enough to be able to run it, uh, which allowed us to do some different things. You've been an excellent coach of this team for 19 years. Where does this one rank considering the circumstances? Uh, I mean, they're all so important. Um, they're all great kids. Uh, this just happened to be a really good one. Uh, you know, I love the outcome for these seniors uh, considering the year we've had. And, uh, you know, we've had a lot of perseverance through the, through the year with these guys, and uh, I'm very proud of them. Happy Thanksgiving, Frank. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, Frank Robinson, the head coach. Andrew, congratulations. What a terrific win for you guys. Thank you. Thank you. You're out of breath here. I mean, that, that, that was something. I still can't believe it. Oh, man. <laughs> You had a lot of disappointment throughout the year. A lot of kids hurt. So, I mean, that was a big reason why you guys were 1-8 and eight coming into this game. But at the end of the day, you're able to salvage a win against your Crosstown rivals. What does it mean to you? Oh, everything. I mean, we've had definitely a tough year. Uh, but this one, I mean, this is everything. This means everything just to be able to win this one. You really had a great uh, presence in the pocket today and, and certainly to cap it off with the throw to, to Tib Wall. Talk about that uh, touchdown pass that ended up being the game winner. Oh, man. So our line's been amazing. And then for just to try to make a play and for Tibble to make that catch, it was amazing. It was amazing. Well, go enjoy this one with your teammates. And I'm sure this will make uh, Thanksgiving and that turkey taste a little better on Thursday. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. The All Warriors win. Chris Grace back with us uh, one final time. And that about sums it up. I mean, those guys uh, really played their hearts out today. They were huge underdogs, Chris. But uh, at the end of the day, you and I said uh, at the beginning, that's why they play the games, and this is why they play the game. You know, it's the second year in a row, Pete. We expected one thing to happen, something completely different happened, and and you just have to admire, like I said, the stick to of this team to bounce back from all of those tough defeats in a row. Leave it all out there, and uh, you see the you see the looks on the coach and the players' faces, and uh, you can't you can't replicate that. This is a moment that these guys will have forever. And it's a, a really special Saturday afternoon in West Hartford for a really special game that is uh, as fun of a rivalry as we have around here. You see the red on one side, the blue on the other. And now the blue side is going to be happy for the next 12 months, and the red side is going to have to wait for another sporting event to get the revenge. So uh, just a great day here at McKee Stadium, and hopefully there will be many more like this in the future. First time in three years that the Hall Warriors were victorious against their crosstown rivals. Connor trying to win three straight for the first time in 19 years, not to be the case. Chris, thanks. Great job as always. Always a lot of fun with you. Always fun catching up with you, man. We'll see you at this time next year. Hopefully. Absolutely so. Chris Grace calling the game with us today on WHC-TV Channel 5. Thanks to everybody involved with the broadcast. Starts with Paul McConnell and Dennis Swanton atop the World Chief Sports Council. Thanks to Jen Evans and Brendan McCormick from the TV and for all of our volunteers that came out today to McKee Stadium. And the final score for the final time as the Hall Warriors able to salvage a great win to end their season at 2-8, 23, the Connor Chieftains, 20. A reminder to join us, it'll be high school basketball on January 16th. Until then, so long, everybody. Oh, that was fun. That was fun.